Good evening. This is a virtual meeting of the Rutland, Massachusetts Conservation Commission. I'm Peter Crane, chair of the commission. Before we begin, I want to roll, uh, call the roll to ensure we have a quorum and staff to support the meeting. As I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Eric Bigelow. Bill Cannon. Yep. Skip Clark. Yep. Skip Clark is in the room with me, and if you guys don't hear him, I will relay the messages, or he'll will move close enough to be able to be heard. Joe Delaquilla. Melissa Danza. Here. Jared Gentilucci. Here. Tamika Murphy. Here. One, two, three, four, five members being present. I declare we have a quorum, and I call this meeting to order. As a preliminary matter, I'd like to confirm all persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. I'll call an applicant's name or a project uh, please announce your name and who you're affiliated with so that we can make sure we can take appropriate minutes. Oh, just a minute. I need to add somebody else. I love the security on Zoom meetings. It makes my job so easy to have to keep <laughs> checking things. All right, 276 Pomegasset. Hi, that's Kevin Massey, and I will be talking about my own property at 276 Pomegasset. Right, okay. Maple Hill Estates, lots three and four. Leave there. Okay. I'm pretty sure that one's easy tonight, Clee, because I think we just needed the number from the DEP. Oh, did, did you receive it from the DEP? No, oh, we don't have that one yet. All right, so we'll just end up continuing anyway. Brenton Hall Estates. Clee, I'm here for that. And so is Chris Anderson and Tom Liddy. Uh, Carl, will you be talking also this evening? I don't see Carl. I swear I saw him come in. I'm hoping he's here because he, he he did a lengthy review there. I'm right. Here. Sorry about that. I was muted. I'm here. Sorry. There he is. All right. Great. Thanks. Uh, for 73 Woodside Ave. I'm here. Sean Mead. Sean Mead. Do we have anybody to talk uh, for the CMRPC on some trail data? Or is that, that may just be a discussion that we have, but. And that's not on the agenda, so we'll talk about that separately. Okay. This open meeting of the Rutland Conservation Commission is being conducted virtually in a manner consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of this virus, we have been directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings of more than 10 people, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting lot to have all meetings in a publicly accessible, accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies, excuse me, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet remote, entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom video conference as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded, streamed live on the internet, and broadcast on Rutland's channel 192. Uh, no, I apparently didn't say, well, that's so I'll skip along with that. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to, to follow along using the posted agenda. A few ground rules. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After, so for each specific agenda item, I'll introduce each speaker. After that person concludes their remarks, I'll invent, I will invite comments, questions, and motions from commissioners. Further, please remember to mute your, mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And when you are speaking, please do so clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. Please state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken and asked their questions, the chair will afford public comment as first, as follows. I'll ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify themselves and then 
I'll call you all one at a time and give you three minutes for lengthy discussion. I'm not going to stick to a hard three minutes, but you get the idea. Uh, and as before, when engaging in a discussion in a conversation, please do so through the chair. Each vote taken tonight must be by roll call vote, and we will do that by me reading off everyone's name and asking for a vote either way. Questions? Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> So, first thing, let's talk about meeting minutes. We have a motion to accept from Skip. So my only amendment was just in the beginning intro. It says select or instead of con con, but other than that, they look fine. Well, Sorry, I, I will take care of that. <laughs> it's well, a lot of well, copy and paste. I get it. I know. I got a lot of them going at once. Uh, also, Tamika, that is not yes. the script that I read at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, which, oh, no, okay, that was my error. I copied and pasted from the wrong one. That's okay. No, it's, you, you probably don't have a copy of this script. Just I don't think I do. No, I've just been using the one that Mike's been using pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't be this precise. I would just say that the chair read notice about, about how we're meeting and the rules of the meeting. Okay. That's probably good enough. Sure, I can do that. Other than that. Are these friendly amendments acceptable to the motioner and the seconder? We have a yes. Ben, all in favor, roll call. Cannon. Aye. Clark. Aye. Denza. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane, aye. That is unanimous. Peter, I apologize. I missed who seconded that. Uh, I thought Jared did. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so our agenda says this. Oh no, that's minutes. We're done with this now. So let's go to. I just want to pull the agenda up. So, for those of you who don't understand what's happening here, I'm taking my computer and projecting on the screen, and that screen is what's being broadcast on television. So, I'm trying to set things up so that the public can see what we are doing. And for some reason, I can't find, oh, no, that's the agenda. That's what I'm looking for. All righty, so we are well beyond seven. So let's begin our, uh, I don't think this is actually a hearing. But still, for the request of determination of applicability for Kevin Massey, 276 Palmagusset. So, Mr. Massey, here, let me pull you up. I don't know that anybody is interested in seeing a PDF of the RDA on the screen, but if so, oh, uh, I can make that happen. Even faster if I could read what I'm doing and see my cursor. So, Mr. Massey, please go ahead. Um, so the shed that I proposed to be built at 276 Palm Augusta, the high water mark is um, from the corner point would be 51 feet. And can, am I allowed to screen share or no? Uh, I can make that happen. Because I, uh, I can screen share what I have from the exemption list, if that's all right with you, I'll click right on screen share right now. Host to see. Hold on. Yep. There you go. Try now. All righty. So, uh, let's see here. Should all right. So, if I'm looking at it correctly here, this is 310 CMR 10.02 exemption E and the conservation of lawn to use as accessories to residential structures such as decks, sheds, which I'm concerned about, patios, pools, and replacement of basement bulkheads, installation of ramps, and compliance with the applicability uh, requirement provided the activity, including material staging and stockpiling, is located more than 50 feet from the mean annual high water line within the riverfront area bank of the bordering vegetation wetland, whichever is further. Um, and erosion and sediment controls are implemented. Since I'm not doing any site work, I don't, 
I don't think the erosion uh, and sediment controls apply to me, but um, the 51 feet, I didn't know if I was exempt from the law anyways. So, let's... Yeah, sorry, who's going to speak here? Somebody said something. Um, if I remember... Oh, sorry, I see Jennifer from DCR. Please. Can you hear me? I can yep. hear you. We can hear you. I wonder if she can't hear us. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm watching another meeting from another Conservation Commission. Can you repeat the question? This was for 276 Pomegusset regarding a shed? Correct. Correct. The shed that the uh, uh, applicant says the nearest corner of the shed is 51 feet away from the mean high water mark of Edson Pond. Okay. Yes. So are you asking from, from a conservation standpoint or from a DCR standpoint? Let's ask from a DCR standpoint. Um, he, he should um, contact our office regarding if uh, he needs to do an advisory ruling for it. Ah. Because I, I believe that, that lot, the whole lot's in a primary zone. Okay. Yep. Which is 200 feet from yep. the edge. Yeah, so you should contact our office regarding that. Okay. I just didn't know if I, there was an exemption because I was the, it would be 51 feet from the mean annual high water line. So, so those exemptions are just for the Wetland Protection Act. Okay. And, and not for DCR watershed protection. So okay. if, um, and without seeing the plans, I don't think, think our office has received anything yet from you. No. So without seeing it, I can't really speak on whether or not there is uh, an exemption from it from our standpoint, but the commission okay. can rule on it the way they see fit under the Wetland Protection Act. Okay. Right. Okay. Mr. Massey, there are two different sets of laws and regulations going on here. Okay. The one you've put up is for the for the Wetlands Protection Act and the one that that Ms. Mrs. McGinnis is talking about is from the Watershed Protection Act. Alas, two similar sounding but not the same laws and regulations at all. Uh, yeah. DCR, it, DCR completely takes care of the watershed and we take care of wetlands. Okay. Can I ask a question about that? Yes. Peter? Sure. Feel free, Clay. So he's not doing any excavation. All he's doing is building a shed. How does that involve anything? Uh, uh, because he's also doing on-site construction, and that means debris from construction. Oh. I thought just the, the, the acts were about excavation, but okay. Uh, usu usually the largest concern is soil erosion, I agree with you, but the act is very, un is, is, it's not as straightforward as if you're not moving dirt that you don't have to worry about the Wetland Protection Act. Yeah. And Peter, I'll, I'll add on to that. It, the, yep. the Wetland Protection Act also says just the alteration of that area. So putting a shed, even though it might not be soil disturbance, the land is being altered with um, impervious surface in that area. Okay. Even if it's already maintained as a yard, as like a surface that I'm already using currently, like I'm not. Yeah. That's okay. All right, right. There's someone in the waiting room, so I'm going to add them in. I'm going to hold on one second, since I still had the oh. post sharing. I didn't see that there was somebody in the. Waiting room. I think it was because you made me allow it to screen share. I think okay. I had to let them in. Interesting. Oh, I see. I transferred complete host to you. Yeah, you did. Make you co-host. Oh. <laughs> that means I'm the czar for the night. So. Got you now, Peter. Right. Gonna say, please transfer that. Please transfer host back to me, I pretty, please. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. I got to go back. I'm gonna get out of the screen share right now. Hold on. So. So, um, I do want to bring in Jared. I know that Jared went and did a site visit. Melissa, did you go also? Not with Jared, but I've driven past it. You've driven past it. All yeah. right. So we'll start with Jared. Jared, please give me your thoughts on uh, on what you saw when you visited. So I did a, did a drive-by, and it looked to me like the shed was built. There's a, a swing set and kind of a, kind of like a sand gravel area where there's a swing set that's closer to the, the pond. 
and then the shed is on the uh, we'll call it the street side of the property um, on the other side of the swing set and um, I did look through the Wellness Protection Act and I, in my opinion I think this most likely would fall under that exemption mm -hmm. if it is over 50 feet from the mean high water mark um, and it also appeared to me as well that uh, again it, I agree with Melissa's statement that technically putting a shed up changes the surface condition because it does create impervious area where there was pervious area but I think this would fall under that exemption still um, and, and again there was no no earthwork for it it was a previously disturbed area mm -hmm. so um, yeah in my opinion I think the exemption would apply and um, I, I would I would lean towards uh, negative determination on this okay Melissa your thoughts no, I'm in agreement um, with Jared. I'd say the same thing. You know, as long as it's above that 50, um, you know, negative determination is is basically you're getting your permission to do so, and the exemption um, counts. I know that language is a little backwards, um, so yeah, I would agree that negative determination would be a good way to go. Okay. Um, did anyone else visit the site? Hearing not, um, do we have any other thoughts from the commission? Hearing none, do we have any other questions from the public? Uh, this is Jennifer again. I would just uh, state that um, you contact our office regarding um, 313 CMR 11. Okay. See if you need to file anything with us. Um, okay. I'll give you my, my work phone number. Obviously, we're all working remotely right now and yep. you can give me a message with your phone number and I'll have someone contact you. Okay. It's a uh, 508 Yep. 882 yep. 3636 Okay. Extension 1602. 1602. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. And that's Jennifer, right? Yeah, and either uh, okay. myself or Alan will contact you uh, okay. regarding I just Alrighty. know Alan's phone number off the top of my head, so. That's fine. That's perfect. Thank you. If I can figure out how to give you the host back right now. Um, I've done this many a times, but for some reason I can't figure out where I'm, the host is. The to way I do it is I click on participants, which should open a new window. Yep. And yep. then go up to me. With Peter go to Crane, more. And go more. Yeah, there you go. You're back to host. There it is. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> now I feel better about giving a vote. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we need a motion, please. Uh, I will, this is Melissa, I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination for 276 Pomegasset. Awesome. And Skip has seconded. Roll call vote. Kennan. Aye. Clark. Aye. Aye, he says. Denza. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane. Aye. There we go. Motion carries. So your concom work, you're clear yeah. on. You just get clear from DCR and nobody right. will. I don't think there is anybody else to give you troubles on this, Mr. Master. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much. Um, Have a great night. Peter. Yes. If, if I may, um, on the vote, am I adding in the same thing we did last time where it gives you permission oh, to good sign point. on behalf? I need somebody, I need somebody to, to, to motion that I be allowed to sign uh, the, the, the negative return of that, the do we want to do of a, ability on behalf of the entire commission. Are we going to do a separate motion or just amend the exemption? Well, do a second motion because we've already voted on the other one. So Skip okay. just made the motion. Second. Well, this is second. Yet another roll call. We'll do it backwards. Crane, aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. Clark. Aye. Cannon. Aye. Okay. Now, please, let's all try to remember that that should be part of all the votes that we do tonight that we have, that need signatures. And Thank Kevin, you for reminding once I us, have, Tamika. Sure. And, Kevin, once I have Peter's signature, I... I will send it to you at your home address. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Next, I'm going to reopen the hearing for Maple Hill Estates, lots three and four. So, Tamika, we don't have the numbers, the number for that, correct? Uh, that is correct. All right. So, I would like a motion to continue, please. A motion to continue. Skip seconded. <laughs> Till May 19. Uh, all in favor, Cannon. Skip Aye. Clark. Uh, Denza. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane Aye. There we go. Now, please tell me. Oh, no, we can't be ahead yet. So now, let's talk about Brent Nall Estates. Uh, we're going to reopen the hearing for, Brent, for the NOI for Brent Nall Estates for the modification. <sighs> or, no, it's a new one. Whatever. We're reopening that. Boy, am I a formal guy. Uh, who would like to do presentations based on the latest, newest filings? Uh, hello, Peter. Uh, this is Tom Liddy, Lucas Environmental. Hi, Tom. Um, I am here representing uh, Clee Blair. Uh, Chris Anderson from Hannigan Engineering is also in this uh, meeting. Um, and so, yeah, as you know, we submitted a notice of intent uh, uh, back in February for the Britain State Subdivision. Um, we've been undergoing review from uh, the Army Corps, uh, DEP 201 program, and DCR in addition to the commission and the commission's uh, third party reviewer, Carl, Carl, who's here obviously as well. Yes. Um, so the, the biggest uh, change we've had thus far, uh, was, which is part of the most recent package we sent you guys, we've been relooking at the, the wetland crossings. There's two wetland, wetland crossings proposed originally totaling approximately 9,700 uh, square feet of permanent impact to wetlands. Um, we we looked at the, the crossings and um, we were able to further reduce the width of the roadway fill. Um, and uh, we also incorporated um, additional open bottom box culverts beneath the roadway and also were able to cantilever the proposed sidewalk over the wetland instead of supporting the sidewalk with uh, solid fill. Um, at crossing one, there's now four um, 18 foot wide box culverts and at crossing two there's now uh, two 18 foot wide uh, box culverts and what this did is reduce the permanent impacts from uh, the 9700 square feet to uh, 4838 square feet uh, which is a reduction of a, about uh, 50 percent um, so we've been uh, that was the most you know that was the biggest change in that that plan revision. Um, you know, we've been uh, going through the review with um, uh, Tom, Carl. Ex excuse uh, me for one second. Oh. Peter, um, this is Clee Blair. Uh, may, yes. I, may I just correct one quick thing? I just, I, Tom said it correctly, but I want to make sure people weren't confused. The width of the roadway is, is still 24 feet, and it's not changing. He's talking about the, the amount of width of the fill being 30 feet right as opposed to we were originally doing the full easement of 50 feet mm -hmm. we close it down to 30 which i believe carl can correct me if i'm wrong but that's exactly what we did at um bryce estates we did 30 feet of of fill across the width and then we just attached the sidewalk to right up to the road which kept us in that 30 feet so it doesn't I don't believe that we're gonna to have to hang a sidewalk we did on the bridge to Bear Hill right that because it was the bridge and it didn't it wasn't even on fill anyway and that was the easiest way to do it but as far as that this is concerned we should be able to put the sidewalk right up against the berm as long as it's the, the planning board said it was okay and Norm and um, Sean were on one of the sidewalks and they you know, made an indication that they would probably be okay with that. Okay. So I, I, sorry to interrupt, Tom, but I just wanted to correct that that little situation. Oh, no, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, as I said, we've been um, communicating with Quinn Engineering. Uh, they submitted 
uh, what's hopefully their last comment letter. Um, and uh, I guess why don't we discuss that? I don't know if uh, if you have any questions just on what I discussed or if you want to go through their review or, or whatever questions well, you might have. Let, let's start with your overview and, and see uh, what questions the commission has on that. So uh, anybody in the commission, questions on this overview? I, I assume you can see the screen I have up, which is the PDF. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't assume that. I can see it perfect, Peter. Okay. Is there any way you can put Carl's um, review up as well? Oh, that, that'll be coming up, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I don't know if somebody wants to look at the uh, crossings in any more detail. Uh, will, you talk, will you think about changing the replication space any differently? Because we had talked about, uh, I want to yes. say, 15,000 square foot reclamation. Okay, so... What what if I could comment on that again? It's Clee. Um, mm -hmm. The um, the replication area originally was one and a half to one, as right. um, the commission had asked prior. The the replication areas. Um, and I don't know. You know, I've I found out over the last you know year or so between Holden and and and, Bear, and Bryce Estates, they they're extremely expensive. Um, Cost about fourteen dollars a square foot to, um, I, I believe that's that's the number to, uh, to, to to actually do. And then you've got to watch these things. You know, you, you're in this case we're only responsible for for two years. But if if we can if we can move that to one to one, then for a one to one replication, which is state law, it would be helpful to us. Number one for costs, and and number two. It would be, you know, just helpful as far as uh, uh, have not having to watch it um, for for the uh, over ten years. I, I think it, once you go under five thousand, or is it that once it doesn't require Army Corps, you, you can you can only watch it for two years. How does that work, Tom? Do you, can you help me there? Uh, well, uh, initially, when this project was initially submitted with the Corps, um, you know, we had that ten thousand square foot uh, fill amount. And uh, when you're in that level of threshold, you have to uh, comply with their compensatory mitigation requirements. Um, so we had a, um, you know, a larger replication area. Uh, now that we have our permanent fill under 5,000 square feet, we're no longer required to um, adhere to their standards for that. And one of those standards was monitoring for 10 years for the core to um, accept wetland replication and so now we're just sticking with the state um, requirements to, for the monitoring for two years so um, that was the change in the monitoring requirement okay so right now we're proposing two years of monitoring following construction so what I was asking the board for was to allow us to just keep that at one-to-one -one. Area as opposed to one and a half to one. Okay. Do, does the commission have questions or comments about that? Peter, this is Jared. I do yeah. have. Uh, I did have a question and a comment. It was actually related exactly to this. So this is. This is going to bring us up. Um, I'll preface it by saying I completely understand that. We as a commission in the town, we don't have anything that requires more than the state mandate of one-to-one -one for the Wetlands Protection Act. So um, we can't require more than that as far as I know. Uh, personally, I would love to see the one-and-a-half-to-one. Um, understanding that that was more of a requirement before because of the amount of fill that was happening in wetlands uh, in a... In a higher level of replication was required. I am happy to see that the uh, wetland impacts have been reduced by about half, which is great. Um, but I just wanted to just share my thoughts that I, I would love to see a one and a half to one. Um, that's just my, my personal preference. Has the replication area moved? Uh, no, it's in the same uh, location. Same location, as, okay. Uh, yeah. By the way, that's not vodka I'm drinking, it's water. I wish it was vodka. I was going to say, Clee, come on. <laughs> oh, there's a single to mine. 
Wow, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's supposed to be tequila, tequila. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Skip, questions or comments? Skip says no. Melissa, you still with us? You're off in Southboro. I'm here for now. Um, you know, I, I guess I... I would agree with Jared. It'd be nice to see the one and a half if we can. Um, you know, I think maybe a reasonable kind of written response into why the the one to one is kind of the most agreeable to the project. Um, if that's kind of what you're going for, um, and why kind of the one and a half isn't kind of a, a feasible alternative for that. If I could, I could probably comment on that right now, Melissa or Peter. If if I could tell you, so. Um, is it okay, Peter? Yeah, go ahead, Clay. Okay, I, I um to to in order to get the the um, fill amount down below the five thousand, we added. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Chris. Three culverts, bottomless culverts. Is that correct? Three bottomless culverts. Uh, four, I believe, on the larger crossing, and two of them on the. Uh, we, we added that many, or, or we or we. Oh. Total of four, so we added three. Okay, so we added three. Those each one of those bottomless culverts, if they're the same as what went into Bryce Estates, which I believe they are, cost just the culvert itself cost thirty thousand dollars. So I just added one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to my road costs, and I, I just I'm trying to save costs where where I wherever I can, and you know the the, the replication area is a big cost, and and you know those plan I just. I just it just cost fourteen thousand dollars for the plants in one replication area that I'm doing in Holden. Um, it's just crazy the amount of money that it costs to do those. So the real reason is I'm trying to save money, and I am, and it's costing me a lot more because I'm saving the wetland impact by over five thousand square feet. So it's like I'm asking for a little bit and I'm giving a lot. That's that's the only real reason right there. Mr. Cannon, questions or comments? Not at this time, thanks. Not right now. Okay. Um, do, do, these, are the new these are the new drawings. I was actually going to go for the. Um, what's that? So the uh, right. So this one, this is crossing one, I think. Correct. That's correct. Uh, and which has the one, two, three, four culverts right here. Uh, is that right? It's got to yes. be. Yes. There's four open box culverts on crossing one. All right. So let me. So let's skip one to also see number two. Do you remember what page that's on? Uh, it should be on page twelve. I want to say. Oh, what a good call. <laughs> okay, so then one, two, where's the third? Uh, there's only two on crossing two. Oh, only two on two, okay. Um, I remember seeing a map, uh, excuse me, a, a sort of cross section of the culverts. That's way down towards the bottom of this, right? Uh, correct. If you go to, I want to say it's page 18. I think, hold on, sorry. Uh, might have overshot. Uh, 17. 17? Yeah. There you go. I remember seeing this when I reviewed these earlier. I shoot this way. There are a nice four right there. Yep. So now this gives you a more schematical review of what the culverts are going to be doing mm -hmm. um, out on the site. Um, as part of our review with Carl, um, he had requested that we provide a uh, more generic actual detail of what we typically do for construction of one of these uh, uh, culverts, so we can probably go over that in a little bit. But this sure. shows you essentially just a schematical view of mm -hmm. w where they're going to go and what it's going to look like relative to the utilities in the area. Right. Okay. 
So that's the four, and the other one is down here, or am I off by another page? Ah! Uh, then you have one more page. <laughs> Doesn't matter, I've now screwed up whatever page I'm on, so... Oh no, wow, I found it. <laughs> Excellent. There's the other two right here. Once again. And again, these are more of the uh, just the schematic versions or appearance of everything. Yes, right. I admit it. This is my nerd view of things. <laughs> All righty. Um, so, do we have other questions before we go into the third party review? All righty, let's see if you can find this. So this one is actually the combination of the questions and the comments and the responses from Hannigan. Uh, I can actually go back, Carl, and find the original if you're interested. If, if you'd rather go through that rather than this one, that's fine with me. I don't see Carl anymore in the... Uh... Oh, he's Great. down there. Oh, he's there? Okay. <laughs> he's on the list. All right. So, beginning. Uh, I'm disinclined to read all of this, even into the record, but... Uh, so... Carl there? Yeah, sorry, guys. I lost my connection for a minute. Sorry about that. Ah... Uh, I'm glad you made it back. If, if I can make a suggestion, usually when Carl does these, he can kind of like when we do this at the planning board meetings, he usually points out what his real, you know, issues were and and goes through how how he did the review and stuff, and it gets really kind of you know focused on what needs to be talked about. Yeah, that's that's fine, Carl. You you can take over if you like. Sure. I can either drive the screen or you can. Um, you can drive the screen. I'm just gonna go. Go through my memo, if you don't mind. Nope, that's great. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, my office did a review back in January of 2019 of a set of plans. It was a couple of iterations before this, so that's what this memo is sort of based on, and then we build off of that. Um, we reviewed with respect to the Wetlands Protection Act, the Massachusetts Stream Crossing Standards, uh, DP Stormwater Handbook, and then for general practice. So. The most recent memo came out, I want to say, it was April 20th is the date. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I sort of, I take the original memo, I go through, and as the new revisions come in, uh, the comments either get resolved um, or we provide supplemental comments or we say um, we've collected information and we're going to defer to the commission on how you guys want to make a decision. That's pretty much how it works. Mm -hmm. So. If you don't mind, I'll just go through sort of each comment at a time. Absolutely. Um, so the first comment has to do with uh, the bank delineation or the banks on site. So we're charged to review with respect to the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, there are streams on site, but there's no bank delineation with respect to the Wetlands Protection Act. And um, Clee and Tom can speak to this and Chris can speak to this. Um, but it's... I can't do a review with respect to the Wells Protection Act if there's no bank delineation that was done with respect to that. There's bank delineation that was done for DCR and um, I think Army Corps of Engineers maybe. Um, but that's the, the essence of comment number one. So if they want to sort of give an overview of what was delineated and what's there, kind of that's that stuff, and the commission can talk about that if they'd like. Well, I'll start, and then I'll let Chris and Tom give a give a little uh, push on that so my feeling right from the beginning is there really isn't a bank out there Carl. <laughs> it's it's a bunch of little tiny rivulets that run through the, an area and it's really just a wetland so it was it was extremely difficult to 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 identify a bank and I you know I had Bruce Bauk out there from the um, uh, DEP and he's their you know bank specialist. He he does the the, the zone A delineations, and he you know verifies them in the field. 
And, um, you know, he's, he's just called the whole area a bank. <laughs> I'm like, uh, how do you do that? But so we took our best shot at how we were going to take care of that area with the, with the, with the uh, open bottom culverts because he, he can, you know, they all consider that. I consider it a wetland. Tom and Chris can speak to it more than that, but I just don't know how you delineate a bank when it's just a bunch of rivulets running through a wetland. I, I don't know how you do it. So <laughs> there's an awful lot of uh, open bottom culverts out there uh, that hopefully will protect at least some of the bank that doesn't exist. That's my <laughs> feeling on it. Right. And uh, this is Tom uh, with environmental. Um, yeah, call to that point, you know, looking at this when this first started, we're just, there are three of us, three wetland scientists out there kind of scratching our heads about where is this, you know, quote unquote bank. Um, and just to give elaborate on a little backdrop, like that when you go out there, I don't know if uh, any of the commissioners have been out there, um, you know, after a rainstorm, there's just, wa it, it, there's a lot of water that flows through that area, um, but there's no one well-defined channel that would be your prototypical bank, quote unquote, um, in that you might see flow over, you know, like a 50 foot wide swath, that, uh, give or take a few. And so when we did that delineation for the zone A, um, what we did was just offset, we went out there and flagged, you know, the maximum extent of floodwaters that might pass through this entire wetland system. Um, you know, some, some days there'd be no flow, some storms, you know, the water's flowing over this side now, the water's flowing over that side now. Uh, so what we had, we had Hannigan go out and um, field survey on survey, you know, where they're, what we're calling just like a main channel where the, the flow seems to centralize. Um, and then just take that into account when we're designing these box culverts. So, you know, defining a, a Establishing a W a Wetland Protection Act bank out there was very difficult, and we we just kind of um, you know based it on this uh, where the centralized flow would be, and and that's what we have in a survey plan now, which was uh, performed by Hannigan, and then in in the terms of uh, complying with the performance standards for bank, you know we we took that one point I think it was one point two foot wide channel and. Uh, extrapolated from that. So, in you know, looking at it holistically from bird's eye view, we have a crossing one of these four 18 foot wide culverts, um, which will still allow the flow to, to pass through that wetland system. Um, so, that was our approach for determining bank out there. And that's that. So, Peter, um, so Carl, we can check uh, that one off, right? It's, it's Carl again. Um, <laughs> so just for, the, for the commission's purpose, um, it's, it's difficult for me to say that, yes, the plans conform to the stream crossing standards when there's no real bank delineation because that's how you, you measure it. And so I, I don't dispute that there's undefined channels or it's difficult to define the channels, but for the commission's purpose, um, maybe I know I know people people have already looked at it, but maybe you want to have your own person go out and look at it and say yes, we agree, or yes, we think it's here, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can make you can make your own decision based on your consultant and get information directly from your third party. But that's that's up to you guys how you, you want to handle that. Right. Um... Melissa, do you have any thoughts? Sorry, I had to find my screen. Um, you know, it's, it is very common for commissions to use peer reviewers. Um, you know, I think with this, there's been a lot of different parties and entities out there. Um, I guess I agree with Carl that it's difficult to determine the compliance with the crossings when there isn't a bank. Um, you know, but I do understand the complexity of kind of that zigzag kind of braided network. Um, so I guess I am I'm, I'm 
on the fence, I guess. Um, I would feel more confident if we had someone go out there um, and kind of analyze the, the wetland side of things um, in terms of boundaries and bank. Um, but I'm open to kind of what other commissioners think. And, um, oh, this is uh, Tom Wood again. Sorry to interrupt. Um, for what it's worth, and I know this is a little different than, you know, with what we, you guys look at, but um, we did have a site visit with the Army Corps and the DEP, and they they had the same, I mean, everybody looking at it would have the same kind of comment of, well, where's the bank? Um, you know, our, in, in viewing the area, the Army Corps and DEP, Gary Domain was the one uh, who was out there. We're all looking at the same area, kind of like, yeah, you know, what do you, what do you do in this situation? Um, and they felt that the the larger bulk uh, box culverts really did address their concerns with flow and and dynamics of water being able to pass through. Um, and Army Corps did issue the Army Corps permit um, with this exact design. And, um, so they're I know it's different, um, but their concerns were satisfied. Um, Gary, I don't want to speak for Gary Domain, but he didn't appear to have uh, substantive issues with that. Uh, for whatever that work for for whatever that is worth. I think to follow up on that, Tom, it might be useful if maybe you could get a statement um, from Gary. I know they're kind of not always willing to do so, um, but kind of the if you can get a sort of consensus or agreement that yes, this is what we found in the field and we're comfortable with it. Um, whether you know the Army Corps permit, you know that can kind of serve for itself. Um, you know, and I know you're going through the 401, but I think that might help to settle some concerns as well. Okay. Well, we can uh, inquire with Gary on that. Okay. I'm going to go off the board for a moment and ask Jennifer McGinnis if she has any thoughts on the matter either way. Granted, DC, she's DCR, but she's decent people. <laughs> and maybe she's not really listening, then I might not go off the board. Um, Hi, I'm here. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm, I'm, like, I'm actually at another Conservation Commission hearing in a different town. I'm Zoom also, so I'm trying to. I have two computers set up, so you got to bear with me. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's no, a fun it's night. Uh, Tuesday is a popular day. What was the question? I'm sorry. Well, we we have we have a cream, stream crossing standard which is supposed to deal with, but there's no well defined bank, and it's braided streams more than anything else. So how do you define? Uh, how, how do you define complete? Compliance for the Wetlands Protection Act for a stream crossing when you can't really define a, an easy stream, but they, they designed a, a system to transport a ton of water. Um, yeah, so the the streams were the bank of the stream was mostly delineated so that for the zone A, and that was with Bruce out in the field from DEP. Um, so I would really suggest that. It goes back to Bruce for where he feels that those banks would be and, and speak with the consultant about it. Ah. Because, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I just muted the other conference I'm on so I can only hear one thing at once. Um, so, yeah, so we went out, we looked at the streams, um, but the zone A is really um, Bruce's, you know, area of expertise and where he wants to call the bank for those zone A's to be measured from. So I would encourage the applicant to speak with him about where those banks are to be delineated. Yeah, but they were delineated for, not so much for wetlands, but as you said, for zone A. Zone A, yes. Yeah. So so even though the zone A protects the, the watershed, it's not actually in our regulations. Zone A falls under the drinking water regulations and under DEP's regulations and Bruce is the zone A guy. He's the one in the state right. that determines what the zone A is, where the boundary of it is, etc. So 
I can't really answer that question without kind of overstepping my bounds on where Bruce would call it. Sure. Uh, I don't see Carl. Did Carl disappear? No, I'm still here. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. You just That's moved fine. around. <laughs> I love the way that people just move. Um, so, um, Peter, maybe you want to have Tom uh, discuss the difference between the zone A delineation and the delineation that's, that would be done for a Wellness Protection Act bank. Right. That's a great idea. So, Tom. <laughs> uh, so, from, I, from my understanding, there, when they measured the, you know, the where to offset the zone A boundary, um, that was the maximum extent of the portion of the wetland which will convey any kind of surface flow um, at any time of the year. So we went out there, we, def we flagged an edge of the, this maximum extent of where water could conceivably flow at, you know, that after you know a significant rainstorm or during the high water time of the year, um, and I'm just going to pull up. Bear with me here. I'm just going to pull up the plan. One moment. So that zone A is probably. I don't have a scale to measure it, but it's probably like a 40, maybe maybe 40 to 50 feet wide. And, you know, a, an intermittent stream bank, if you're, you're trying to find a bank, you know, a stream of that size isn't going to be 40 feet wide. I mean, those are your larger, much more established river systems to be that wide. Um, and so... In, in order to do this, that's why we had uh, Hannikin go out and survey the main channel um, that goes through here, which is going to convey a majority of the flow. Um, and that's how we determined bank at that location. We didn't hang flags, but we had Hannigan go out and actually survey uh, the main channel that goes through there. Yep, and I can speak to that. Um, I was out on the site very early on in this process. Um, I couldn't tell you when, it was a long time ago, unfortunately, uh, but it was during the uh, wetter part of the year after a rain event, and there was some uh, small rivulets forming within the area of the culvert, or sorry, the crossing, um, and I had field service uh, located those locations and used those as the principal reason uh, for the location of my culvert designs. So, um, and crossing one's a little more obscure, um, if anybody's been out to the site. It's really uh, difficult to determine where you are in the world, uh, but on crossing two, uh, the northern upland portion of the crossing, it does have some well-defined channels, um, and those and in that in those areas of the crossing, that's where we came up with the culvert design. Okay. So our question for the commission today, I think, is how do we determine I mean, we, we see, we see, I see the both perspectives here. Uh, in fact, let me just read down a little further. This is the further of the wetland and stream coming. Lots of words about stream stat. Right, and, and so we did. We looked at. I don't know if you're familiar with stream stats at all, but it's a, it's a, it's a tool developed by USGS to um, evaluate stream conditions and, and stream morphology. And you can go on that program and delineate a watershed, and it will give you a printout of various predicted parameters of what, um, what the stream's nature is, and one of those parameters is it's called bank full width which is how wide a stream is mm -hmm. at bank full um, and this is you know it's an analytical tool it's it's based on um, 
you know, a number of different factors in this report uh, predicted a, a bank full width of 7.8 feet wide. Um, and so even if we, let's just say we use that number, 7.8 feet wide, um, a judging, uh, if, if you were to determine um, compliance with the, the width or the size of the culvert, you use 1.2 times 7.8 feet. And even conservatively, that's about a little over nine feet uh, to size your culvert. Then we're doing four 18 foot wide culverts. So, um, you know, given, you know, the difficult nature of the stream, we feel that, you know, in terms of complying to uh, performance standards with bank, you know, four 18 foot wide culverts more than is adequate to, uh, to meet the standard. Do you guys miss me? Apparently. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. Like some reason my internet went down and I, I couldn't get back. I, I'm rebooting here for the last five minutes. <laughs> um So I guess my question right now is, what is the question before the commission? So, Peter, uh, it's Carl. My, my question is, I can't really provide the commission with a review for the street crossing standards or impacts to bank if there's no delineation. Um, so, again, I understand that it's, it's a hard thing to, to figure out in the field, and, and maybe it doesn't exist. And... Maybe the commission wants to have their own consultant go out and take a look at it, or like was suggested before, have someone provide information from DEP or something like that, that it is in fact hard to, to determine in the field and what they're showing on plan is a good representation and maybe there really, there really isn't a defined bank. If I could answer that, or at least add a comment to that. The DCR and the DEP have both. Um, DCR already held their their hearing. The DEP, um, I, I believe, is is about ready to um, uh, you know issue their their permit for the 401. Uh, I just I, I if you call it a wetland, which is really what it is, there's no bank there. At least we're protecting, you know, an extra five. 5,000 square feet of wetland that we weren't before. I don't know how you, you Carl. If you've ever have you ever been out there to take a look? I have. Can you can you define a bank? Honestly, I mean, I mean. Um, but to that end, though, too, like I'm not a wetland. Well, botanist, these guys are, and they're telling you they can't. Oh, no, I know. No, I know, and I totally agree. But I'm saying, so I'm I'm telling the commission that yeah, maybe it is hard to define, but maybe they want to have somebody do it for them as a third party to them because as of right now there's a lot of people saying that it's hard to define but it's nobody working directly for the commission so I'm, I'm just suggesting that maybe maybe they want to do that maybe they don't I don't know I'll leave it up to them you know I mean but it, it's put it puts I what I think it it says to the commission is, is at least if I'm mistaken that there's really no way for you to tell us if we're meeting the stream crossing guidelines because you don't see any bank of a stream is that is that really the issue so if there's if there's no bank then there's no real stream right I agree totally so well, that's no what stream. I'm saying like how, how do I do a review for stream crossing if I don't know if there is or isn't a bank that's that's what that's my problem and well, so that's what I'm trying to convey to the Commission to say hey you know this is what I'm looking at ultimately I work for the Commission and I'm looking for direction on them and, or give them give them my input on how to how to go about evaluating this. So there's no real way. What you're saying, though, is there's no, no if you went out and looked at it, and, and you know, all, all our guys have been out and looked at it, and, you know, Lucas Environmental, those guys are very qualified. Hannigan Engineering is qualified. Julian's looked at it. He's qualified. I mean, there is no real bank there at all. So and, that's, and that's fine, and I'm sure everybody's qualified and, and all that. 
but it's it's up to the commission to make the determination. So how do how do they how do they, how do they do that though? You know, it's they they need to get input from their consultant to make an an informed determination. Well, so that's why I'm that's why I make the comment. That's why we're having the conversation now. Well, I mean, either that or they could take everybody's word for it, including the DEP and the DCRs. Yeah, and that's it's to be honest with you, it's up to them to do that if they want to do it. That's fine. I mean that. Honestly, that there's no other issue with that out there as far as what what's being what's being done out there. I'm speaking to the commission. I I hope everybody can hear me, but I don't know how else you know. And I I see Carl's point, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just telling you what really exists out there is a bunch of water that sheet flows over there once in a while, doesn't show up there half the time, and and sometimes there's little rivulets of water sitting there. There's no defined bank. There's no way. If there was, don't you think it would be? <laughs> we would have put it on the paper. <laughs> there just isn't a defined bank, and I, I've been arguing with them all the time because if if they, I guess if they call it, if they find a bank there, or if they don't, if they don't find it that it has doesn't have a bank there, then it doesn't. It breaks the zone A in that area. So they they want it to say that it has a bank, and so they consider the sheet flow each side. Of the sheet flow of the bank, it, so it would continuously be a zone A. I just think what the protection that we've given it with four 18 foot open bottom culverts is I mean, you we, we far exceed any stream crossing guideline. That, I mean, we had a 16 foot culvert on a little tiny stream that went through in Bryce Estates, and the 16 foot culvert bottomless culvert was enough to meet the stream crossing guidelines. There's four 18 footers here, and there's no stream. I, I, I don't know. I just think it, it's it's a moot point. And I don't care who you send out there; they're going to find the same thing I just told you. Okay, um, Jared, you've been awfully quiet. I'll pick on you for now. I'm used to that, Peter. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of thoughts for how we can proceed on this one. So let me throw out a few ideas, and, and maybe one or all of them makes sense. But I'll, I'll, as we've been talking, I've just been thinking about how to resolve this particular item. Mm -hmm. So it's, it sounds, I, and I have, in full disclosure, I have not been out to the site myself. I have not seen it myself. I'm also not a wetland scientist. Um, but, but working in the field, I work with wetland scientists. and maybe know enough to be dangerous at times, but a couple things I would suggest that we as the commission consider. Um, Melissa already indicated uh, a potential idea of having a, a third party review, or I think that's been mentioned a few times. Um, you know, that that's one idea. If we think the third party review in this case may be overkill and, and maybe us as commission members visually at least confirming for ourselves doing a site visit so we can at least see that yes it's a very undefined channel with undefined bank um, that might be another option overall just looking at all the information that's been provided and, and I did see in the response letter the information about stream stats which indicated the 7.8 feet bank full width um, and considering what is being provided for these open bottom culverts. It, it, in my opinion, it seems like what's being provided is reasonable and really all we need is some sort of verification outside of the applicant's team that, that just verifies the field conditions. Um, if something could be provided from DEP, something not just being told that they agree, um, and I don't doubt that they do, but something in writing from them, if it's possible, I, I, for me, that would that would be fine for me. Um, personally, I think any of those options would be fine. I, I don't think, in the end, I don't really, really see anything changing here. It certainly sounds like this area is a fairly wide, undefined, and more of a wetland area than a stream. And, and I see where Carl's coming from, too, is you can't review for stream crossing standards if you don't have a defined stream. And that kind of puts him in a conundrum with doing the review for this. So th those are my thoughts. And, and I think, I think maybe, maybe one or a couple of those options would be the way to go. Uh, uh, one other thing that, that might also help, too, just for, for our purposes, the commission's purposes, if the stream stats report could be provided to us just confirming 
that bank full width, I mean that based on that bank full width, you're more than exceeding the 1.2 times the bank full width with just one of the culverts. So again, I think what's being provided to me seems reasonable. Um, we just need maybe a little bit, a little bit of, we'll call it, you know, backup information that we can say, okay, it, it's been confirmed that that what's being provided, it generally meets the intent of the stream crossing standards, even though a stream isn't clearly defined here, um, and, and just generally meets the intent of the regulations. And I think it's probably there. Uh, it's just kind of dotting the I's and crossing the T's, in a sense. So, Tom, do you think you could get DEP to write a fast, we agree that there's no bank kind of letter to us? Uh, I can answer that, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> they've already said the whole thing's a bank but here's, here's let me let me uh, I, I Jared's analysis of that was perfect I do want to make one comment that Lucas environmental is the third party you guys are the the agent for the town of South Pro right Melissa you work with them right and those, so if the town of South Pearl had an issue like that, they'd ask Lucas to go out and look at it and verify it. He's telling you that it is, that that's what it is. So I don't know. Somehow I would hope that, you know, we could take our word for it. Hannigan said the same thing. Julian said the same thing. Everybody said the same thing. And and I think Kyle said he looked at it, right, Kyle? You looked at it? Yeah, I was out there. At crossing number one, It's there's not a lot to look at, to be honest with you. It's... No. And then at crossing number two, there's a little bit of channelization, but again, I'm not a wetland scientist, so um, I can't right. uh, comment definitively one way or the other on if there is or isn't a bank there. I think the Con Con could make a, honestly, if, if you guys even just drove down the end by the pump station at Bear Hill and looked over the edge there, you'd, it's, that's where right where the crossing is, right where the, the pavement stops. The crossing is almost right there. I'm telling you, you'll be able to see it plain as day for yourself. Would it, uh, this is Tom, would it be helpful to do a site visit with the commission um, to look at these areas? Is it crossing one? You know, I, I was, kind of what everybody's I, saying, like, you're going to see a flooded swamp. Yeah, Tom, I'll tell you the truth. It's been a long time. I do remember being out here on the sidewalk, but it's been a long time. I'll, and I wouldn't want to trust my memory for it, so maybe setting up a site walk is the easiest thing for us to do to make our own decision. Does mm -hmm. anyone on ConCom not like that idea? I don't hear nothing. So, um, I think in the absence of getting something fast and easy from DEP or DCR, which of course, come on, we both know won't really happen. Um, but I had to ask, wait, wait, wait. right? What do you mean? <laughs> DCR didn't make the decision whether or not it was a zone A or not. That was there is a division of DEP that does that, right. not the wetland division. It's a specific two people that make that decision. So Jennifer, while I got you. Hi. Hi. Second time today, right? Uh, yeah, I know. This is the second <laughs> meeting to, we've been in together. Um, but uh, what did you? What do you feel about that? That area, right? That first crossing, right near the pump station. You've been out there a thousand times. Would you? Do you see a defined bank in that at all? I'm going to defer back to Bruce because it was he, we were looking at it for the zone A purposes. Right. That That's is, that is his job. Like I said, the zone A is not mentioned in our regs. It's part of the drinking water program and how they define it. I'm just going to defer. Really good in state government was doing that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but so could we get day, something well, from Bruce? I would say the day we were out there, there was a channelized flow. I will say that. Right. And that's what Bruce said because the whole area was flooded. He said, this is a flow. I said, yeah, no, <laughs> it's a flood, not a flow. I mean, there, were, there were parts that we looked at Clee that day that we determined there was no, the channel broke. I specifically remember that. So the day we were out there, that's what, that's what we saw. But ultimately, you know, Bruce is in charge of the Zone A program. So right, I'm, not no, get in, I'm not going to get into it with the stream, stream crossing standards. That's, aren't, that's not our regulation. Okay. at all anywhere near our reg 
you know, we were looking at specifically for, um, we were going as a courtesy with Bruce. Okay. So here's what I think we're going to do. We're going to set up a site walk for ConCom. ConCom will post that, that as a meeting because right after that, after the site walk, we will determine if we think we need third party review or if we think we have enough information to move ahead with the information that we have based on our site walk and based on the reports that we have. Perfect. Peter, so, this, is, this is Jared. Just I totally, yes. totally agreement with that. Um, and also, like I mentioned earlier, if we get that stream stats report, I think that just helps hopefully bring this comment to a close. Too. Do you see the stream stats report on the screen right now? Oh, there it is. That is actually all part of. Did you get? Did you download the zip file with all the uh, uh, data from uh, Anderson? Well, Hannigan. Excuse me, <laughs> Hannigan Engineering. I believe I do have it. Yes. Okay. In the zip file is this twenty two sixty seven. That is the response to Mr. Hulkren's uh, uh, letter. And his report, excuse me, and at the end of that is a complete stream stats report. Got it. Just found it. Thank you, Peter. Okay. So. Okay, great. So, before we're done this evening, we'll set up a, uh, actually, we should probably do it now. I hate to break up a meeting, but let's figure out when we're going to do a site walk. Now, I just looked at the weather, and Saturday looks cold and, and partially snowy. So I'm going to do something I really don't like to do, but I'm going to suggest a Sunday site walk, Sunday the 10th. Oh, that's Mother's oh, Day. We're all dead if we do that. <laughs> Oy. All right. Well, then, how about May 16? Is that before the next meeting? Yes. Perfect. The next meeting is the 19th. Works for me. Uh, uh, I'm going to do my usual 10 a.m. I don't hear anybody objecting. That's good. And this one is going to be at... Where would you like to meet? Should meet right at the pump station at Bear Hill would be probably the best place. That sounds good to me. Not 8 p.m., but 10 a.m. There we go. All right. Um, we will absolutely be looking at. You well, know, I think we should plan to look at both crossings, such as they are. Uh, and then, as I said, we'll make a decision. So, Tamika, May 16, 10 a.m. for the site walk and the discussion. You got it. I'll get it posted on the website. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Well, that's question number one. How about we try question number two? All right. Um, so, Carl, again. How many questions were there? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty. Don't worry. Um, Comment number two has to do with crossing number two and the bank there. So I think let's Same circle question. back to that one after we look at the banks. Um, comment number three, this was a comment from the original review back in 2019. Uh, there was information submitted uh, that this was, um, actually there was an alternatives analysis that was submitted. And so this comment just has to, do with deferring to the commission on the review of the alternatives and which one looks, which ones the commission feel are reasonable, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. I don't know if you want to have a discussion with that or if you want to just move on. It's up to you. Uh, we'll just move on because, yeah, we'll just move on for now. Okay, fair enough. Uh, comment number four um, had to do with, again, the in the submittal from last year, there was discussion about how this project meets the limited project standard. Um, and how the roadway width was proposed at 24 feet. Uh, my comment was that the planning board subdivision regulations allow for roadways to have pavement widths of 20 feet for this type of road and suggested that the applicant review that potential with the planning board to see if 
that might be feasible because that would reduce the amount of wetland filling. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Uh, I, the latest revision came back. The pavement width is still 24 feet. Um, so again, just sort of reiterating that maybe they can explore the option of doing a 20-foot paved road. I don't know if, uh, uh, if they uh, contact the planning board or the fire department or anything like that on access issues or potential access issues. I I, I love the idea, Carl. But I but Norm and uh, Sean were out at the one of the site walks. Yep. They they poo pooed the 20 foot. Okay. They wanted me to leave it. I, I wanted to, I, I tried to get them down to 18 feet, but uh, they they were concerned because a car could be coming out and coming in at the same time, and it wouldn't be able to get past. And, they, so and here I, comes the fire truck. Yeah, and that's that's that was Norm's thing, and he, and I and I agree with and I I, I agree with him. Okay. But we left it at 24. Okay, good enough. Uh, comment number five has been resolved. Uh, that had to do with the retaining wall filling. Mm -hmm. Comment number six is just a statement on the BBW alteration and replication areas that was originally um, numbers that were higher than they are now. Uh, it's since been re uh, revised, and Tom went over that at the beginning of this meeting. Comment number seven has to do with the replication area, and the regulations say that you're supposed to replicate at similar groundwater and surface elevations as to where the alteration is taking place. And so they've proposed an area that's sort of removed from the filling, um, but they've indicated it's for conditions related to the soil and superficial geology, mm -hmm. and they think the replication area is going to have a higher likelihood of success at that location. So I'll defer to the commission if they think that's appropriate or if they want the applicant to explore other replication area options. Yeah, when we discussed this at a previous meeting, uh, I believe that the commission's opinion was that the replication, that the proposed replication area was was adequate for for this, based on the surface, the, the surficial geology, and the soils. I thought that that made the most. I thought the commission thought that made the most sense, compared to being immediately adjacent and hitting the soils that were there. I thought that was, I remember the comments on that. So we have, a, we have discussed this and we were, we were satisfied with the replication area. Okay. Um, comment number eight has to do with uh, the wetland delineation that Lucas did in April and July of 2018. Uh, this comment just has to do with that the commission may want to have a third party review that delineation since it wasn't covered under the old notice. Um, again, up to you guys if you want to if you want to take a look at it or not. Uh, I I think we can we can do this on the site walk also. Okay. Since we're going to be there anyway. Yep. Um, comment number nine has to do with replication work and it being overseen by wetland scientists. And Lucas has indicated that they're going to there's going to be a wetland scientist supervising the replication work, and they can make minor field modification modifications as the work is being done, and that there's going to be a yearly monitoring report submitted. So um, again, just deferring to the commission if you guys want to. Uh, maybe you want to think about putting that that as a uh, condition, condition in the order. Right. Yeah. Just bring it to your attention that you can do that, and it's already proposed. But if you make it a condition, then it's it's definite. No, I agree. To make a make a note on that for when we write the orders, please. You got it. Thank you. And so, um, just as a matter of how usually I make my memos, um, if there's something that's going to be a potential condition, I'll I'll add it to the end of the memo. Um, and just sort of, it stays in the memos as I submit them as the, the project goes along so that the commission um, is sort of reminded of things that come up that you might want to make a condition of this. So that at the end, when, when you go to make a vote, you got a memo from me saying everything's been resolved and you might want to make these conditions. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, comment number 10 has to do with uh, the timing of the replication area construction and the commission may want to have that be done immediately after the retaining wall and filling so that the time between the alteration and the replication is minimized. So that's something, again, that if you guys decide you want to condition that, I'll add it to the end of the memo and it'll, it'll stay in the memo. 
I have, I have one comment to make on that to the commission and Kyle, if I may. Sure. We have they they put together a very detailed planting plan for these replication areas. I'm going through it right now, and we rushed at, actually to buy these plants now because this is the best time of year that they take. So if, if this planting is involved, I mean, if the wetland is just seeding it with wetland seed, which, by the way, is extremely expensive seed, um, if that's one thing. But if, if, if it needs to be done uh, and planted, I would ask that we, we do that in, at the time of year when the plants would, be, would, be, would take the best. Whatever. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter. So... How much time difference is there between retaining law being done, done well, we, which was which was Carl's original comment, and the response that has preparation of the roadway base? How far different are those in time, roughly? So they're they're almost I, you know I concur at the same time. I mean, you build the wall, you put the you put the footings in, you put the you know the uh, bottomless culverts in and then you build the walls around them and then you fill it <laughs> so okay. it's uh, and then so as you build the walls you're doing the fill for the for the roadway and then I mean I I hope to have everything moving on that this summer so it, it might not be a great time to plant then maybe a better time to plant in the spring in the following spring I that's all I'm that. asking you know it's I mean I don't whatever you guys prefer is fine I just just kind of Make it a comment too. That's all. All right. That'll that'll be a good discussion point among the commission to figure out when the right. Well, I don't want to engineer a solution for you. Uh, that should be that not that should not be the space we're in, but to at least to get our thoughts on planting season. Got I don't want to. I don't want have the discussion at this moment. I'd rather get through the memo first. Okay. Or the report, but I I understand. Thank you, Clay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, comment number 11 has to do with the replication area itself. Uh, the original comment had to do with the nature of the BBW and what it was comprised of, and the applicant was proposing uh, a ground cover of seed mix in the replication area. And I had said, well, maybe the commission, the commission might want to think about just having um, some leaf litter and stuff like that to better replicate what was being filled in the replication area. Um, Hannigan came back and indicated that the seed mix is included as part of the replication in part to prevent the colonization of invasive uh, species and is also likely to be a requirement for the 401 and the DCR variant. So um, again, just deferring to the commission on how to finish the replication area. It's up to you guys how it gets done. They're suggesting the, uh, the seed mix for those reasons. Okay. Hmm. Peter, is there any comments on that or do you want me to move on? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just processing it now in my head to make okay. sure that I don't have a comment. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I didn't know. No, no, no it's fine. It's fine. I. That's one of the reasons I don't put a camera on me is so that you guys can't see me in my confused states. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Let's move on. I think you're doing okay. great. Actually, I unless someone in the commission has a comment or a question. I think you're doing great at hosting this because I have to do this for my commission like next week for the first time. So I'm taking uh, notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, comment number 12 has to do with the stream crossing standards. So um, again, we'll circle back to that once the banks are looked at or the lack of banks are looked at, however you yep. want to figure that. Um, comment number 13, I suggested that a typical detail of the box culvert be provided, and um, actually that came from Chris Anderson recently. Um, I don't know if you have a copy of it, Peter, but maybe Chris wants to talk about that at all. I don't know if he wants to, to weigh in. Oh, my. Yep, so I did provide, um, I sent it over to um, Peter, and yep, uh, not quite that one. Um, not this one? Not this one, no. Um, it would have came in a couple days ago. 
uh, yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me glance through my email. Because if there's something I get lost in, it's email. Oh, I get to the ConCon con email. Oh, no, don't tell me. No, it's not. Um, I don't see anything. Tamika, do you remember seeing anything? I do. Um, I believe you were CC'd on it, and then I forwarded it out. To oh, it's right there. Okay, got it. There we go. All right. So, um, as part of our conversation with Carl, he had uh, just reiterated a concern that um, he felt that the commission needed to see a generic detail of what you're going to be looking at if you were to stand in the wetland looking at this culvert. So we just developed a generic culvert detail uh, that you would expect to see if you were to stand in the wetland looking at the uh, area. Um, and it shows you a cut through through of, you know, essentially what the footing um, for the culvert will look like um, and the sub-base and base wall forces for the actual wall itself. Um, and a little bit more detail regarding over-excavation and everything like that within the actual culvert itself. So it's more, um, I don't like using the word, but I, there's no way to get around it. It's more like a pretty picture that's actually real compared to what was um, shown in the profile, which is more of a schematical view of everything. Right. Um, right. Obviously... Obviously, this is going to change uh, with thicknesses of walls and stuff like that and final footing dimensions based on whatever um, the structural engineers come back with for the culvert design. So, uh, as you see in the detail notes, it varies and references are supposed to be made to the site plan and any other documents and just depicted in a general manner. So, um, I feel that this, you know, should suffice for just relative to the uh, comments by uh, Quinn Engineering. Yeah, Peter, I think it does. Um, to be honest with you, I, I think it's important for the commission to just have a general understanding of what it's going to look like more than just what's shown on the profile view, which mm -hmm. which is good for informational purposes, but the, the detail that Chris provided here um, has a lot more substance to it and I think gives the commission a better better idea of what, what they're going to be getting if this thing gets approved. Right. Does... This doesn't seem to have any heights on it for the sub base or the base course. Am I missing it? Wouldn't be the first time um, today. <laughs> not on this plan yet. Uh, again, that's usually variable. It depends on the. Uh, well, that's true. The, the engineer needs design. to get in there, doesn't he? The structural guy. Correct. <laughs> They're working on that now. Just okay. talked to the guy today. The uh, plan, you know, the pricing. That's all. Oh, sure. So obviously that, that's been provided as part of the building permit package. I'm sure uh, we can re easily relay a copy of that over to the commission once everything's done. Um, I think so. The wall yeah. design, but I think that'd be fine passing it along. Then, I mean, again, just as a, as part of a really complete documentation package, have, getting that towards the end will be fine. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, comments fourteen. Uh, 16 and 17 have to do with stormwater, and those have all been resolved, so I'm not going to get into them if you don't mind. No, nope, let's skip right over those. Um, comment number 18, this is the end of general comments. Uh, comment number 18 has to do with um, how the Commonwealth defines these kind of structures at the crossings. They're considered bridges, and so they have certain design requirements that go into them, so I just want to make sure that the Commission's aware of that. Um, Please use these at other projects, and uh, there's information that gets submitted to the town. There's a billing permit that goes along with that, I believe, Clee. And previously, the town has engaged uh, a structural engineer to perform reviews. So that was, I, I think that was through the planning board. That was a requirement of the subdivision requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but just so everybody's aware, it's a bridge. It's going to be designed as a bridge. So in, um, in, um... Go ahead, Clee, sorry. It has to meet mass DOT standards, right? Right, Carl. Yeah. So what what did, what they did, what the planning board required at um, Bryce Estates was that I, I provided a structural engineer provide a letter stating that it meets 
it's been designed to this to meet the standards of the D, mass DOT, which which is what I'm assuming that they'll do here. You know, it's it's right. Bridges and DOT, that's all I'm happy to say outside my purview. Yep. It wouldn't it wouldn't be bad to get a copy of the letter, but it's not essential. Uh, but you're you're right, it's something that we had to be aware of as a town, but I don't think CONCOM <laughs> wants to get in the middle of monitoring bridges. <laughs> and that's fine. So that's it, it's a general comment, that's why it's there. Just just so everybody's aware. Um, I don't want it to go unnoticed. That's nope. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yep. Well, uh, comment number 19 has been resolved. Comment number 20 has to do with um, what they're calling for on the plan for erosion controls. Uh, they're calling for hay bales. The commission might want to consider requiring a straw bale, something without potential invasive seeds in it or a compost ox or silt fence or something. Every, other than every order bale. we write now requires straw. Okay, very good. Very good. Um, comment number 21 has to do with uh, the stormwater management located near crossing number two. Um, there was a rain garden proposed on the previous approved plan that has since been replaced by a level spreader. There's a zone A in proximity to that area. And so what they have for treatment that's proposed are catch basins, which flow to the stormwater treatment unit, which then discharges to the level spreader. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's no longer the rain garden at that location, which would account for some level of TSS removal. Um, the DEP stormwater handbook says you're not supposed to use proprietary treatment units as your primary treatment. So, um, and I'll defer to Chris on the background on the design on this, but just so the commission is aware, um, there's multiple regulations going on here. There's, there's uh, stormwater handbook requirements, there's zone A requirements, and so if if they're providing the highest and best level of treatment that's possible at this location, um, I'm going to defer to the commission for having strict compliance with the stormwater regulations because the regulations say technically you're not supposed to do that, but if that's the only option, then that's the only option. So I don't know how you would get around it, but I'll defer to Chris on how how the drain system works there and what the limitations are. Yep, so I can speak to that. Um, here, if you don't mind, can you switch over to the site plan? Yep. Actually, I think this will give me a better a ability to better show you what we're, what we're talking about. Uh, if you go to sheet, I think what, I want to say 12, what was the 12. That might be the best sheet to look at. Uh, one up, or go 13, sorry. If you just zoom into, yep. Okay, so the level, the uh, area that Carl's referencing is pretty much at the location. I want to see it. station number fifty. If you zoom in right in the center of the screen, there, uh, Peter, for one more time. So in the center there, uh, the level spreader area used to be a rain garden. Now under the original um, there, yes. design of everything, yep, way back when, that was considered a BMP, and it was okay in this area because the zone A wasn't in existence in this area at that point in mm. time. Because of the zone A change, we've had to reorientate uh, uh, the drainage system in this area to pull the actual outlet of the drainage system out of that zone A, so we're now in compliance with the zone A uh, requirements mm -hmm. um, under the water protection air, uh, issues. But now what that does is now back into the stormwater management side of everything. Um, under the original design, uh, this area was being captured and transmitted through a water quality unit, deep sunk catch basin, and into a uh, small rain garden as a quote unquote BNP treatment. Granted, it didn't provide much to the side. Right. But what that Right. So, and I think we've talked about this issue a couple times in the previous hearings. Um, but what that does is um, it now creates, because now a level spreader is no longer considered a BNP feature under stormwater management, it now uh, kicks the proprietary structure, the HydroWorks storm sector unit, as being the primary means of TSS removal. Um, on a side note, 
this uh, treatment train is providing the required CSS removal, and that's where we're going to go with that, just as a side note, just so the Commission's aware. Um, but under Standard 6, which is the requirements of uh, critical areas, we're not allowed to have a proprietary structure being the primary um, means of treatment. Um, but unfortunately, due to the history of the project, that the fact that the road was in existence and approved and um, property has been sold and switched hands at this point in time, the road is kind of stuck where the road is, unfortunately. Right. Um, so there's really no uh, way to provide a uh, additional BMP treatment in this area due to, the, one, the location of the road um, and general topography in the area. Uh, it's relatively flat, so you can't really build the road road up uh, enough in order to get a additional BMP structure in this area. Mm -hmm. So the logistics of trying to get a quote unquote another rain garden or anything like that in this area is very difficult to um, accomplish. So relative to the feasibility of it, that's where we get stuck with. Um, but when you start looking at, and I think Carl can, you know, agree or disagree with what I'm going to say, um, standard six, you the intent is to protect the critical areas. This, in this case, the zone A and everything else associated with that. Um, by providing the treatment of the TSS prior to discharge, I, it's our interpretation that we are providing the best uh, means of treatment and we're protecting the interest of the wetland by removing the sediment load from the area and preventing any unnecessary sediment getting into the resource area. So it's our opinion that even though, yes, we are not fully comp uh, complying with the critical area requirements with uh, proprietary structure, we are providing, or we're providing the intent behind the standard by providing the, the required treatment of the TSS, which we feel is more important than the fact that there's a structure discharging to a small depression before it hits the wetland. Peter, I would, I would agree with that statement. Um, I think the technicality of the regulations are one thing, um, but for practical purposes, the level spreader that they're proposing there, mm -hmm. um, if it's got any kind of a little sump in it, would probably provide some level of TSS that was equivalent to whatever type of a rain garden were going to be proposed there. Um, ideally, rain gardens filter stormwater through the bottom of the structure mm -hmm. so that it can remove nutrients and sediment, stuff like that. But given the location of where this is and the proximity to the wetland, the groundwater is probably pretty high. There probably is not going to be a lot of infiltration going on there. Right. So I think for practical purposes, I think what you have here is basically equivalent to what was proposed previously, although technically with respect to the regulations, it's not the same. So that's it gets, that's why yeah, I sort of it gets into a convoluted area with the with the stormwater management, unfortunately. Right, right. <sighs> well, first thing I have to say is thank you for both agreeing that this is <laughs> this is going to meet the intent of the regs, even if it doesn't meet the letter of the regs. See ya. Um, and I, go ahead. And I can speak to it a little bit to what Carl had said relative to the level spreader. Um, the original rain garden wasn't designed to the standard that you would expect a proper rain garden to be designed to for a BMP treatment level. Mm -hmm. um, in my personal opinion, um, the, granted it does provide some TSS removal in smaller events, the larger events, the water is just going to pour in and pour out at a drastic rate. At a greater rate, so the TSS removal efficiency is not going to work as oh, well. Agreed, yeah. uh, so, so uh, um, to that point, the rain garden might not have been really considered a rain garden, more as a depression with some wetland or some vegetation in it, and the level spreader is more of just a riprap pad with a depression in it. So it's still providing the intent, just without the plants in it. Right, right. So what does the commission think about this? Um, I'm going to start at the top. Will, you have anything? Any thoughts on this? 
No, I don't. Uh, if the water level is that high, I think the spreader would be better. Okay. Jared? Yeah, Peter, just a, a couple thoughts. Um, do we know approximately what the depth to seasonal high groundwater is here? Are we talking maybe like a foot or two down, really, really shallow? Well, it has to be greater than a foot. So, um, just because it's not a wetland, but it's it's not deep, for lack of a better term. But we do not have a test pit in that area. Okay. I think um, j just going back to the stormwater standards and and what you already talked about. I think I would agree that I think the intent is being met. I looked at the detail for the level spreader, and I had the same thought that there is a sump in the level spreader. So. There will be potentially some infiltration that's promoted there, and you do have the the deep sump catch basins with hoods and the water quality structure, which technically gets you your 80% TSS. Understanding that standard six does look for proprietary structures to only be used for pretreatment, uh, which does limit what you can use for primary treatment, which are things like infiltration basins, bio basins, things like that. Um, I don't really have an issue with it. I, there's a lot of constraints in this part of the site and I think what you've provided to me seems pretty reasonable. Uh, one question I do have, what's the rough square footage of roadway that drains to catch basins 9 and 10? Uh, bear with me for one moment. And the reason I ask, I'm just curious what amount of roadway area I don't know if you know this, kind of compared to the, the whole development, if it's a, it seems like it's a going to be a relatively small area, yeah, um, but I was just curious what that, what that is. Some of the drawers are doing these things on remotely, I can look up all my files. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at a little more than half an acre and thirty eight going through this area. So it's relatively small area. Okay. Yeah, Peter, I I I think I'm okay with what's proposed. I think there's with all, all the constraints, I think what they provided meets the intent. Okay. Skip. Questions or comments? No, I agree with Skip's coming right along with us. Melissa? No, I would agree, um, especially with what Jared said. You know, it's a tight little area, and I think as long as they're meeting the TSS requirements, um, and, you know, that area can handle the amount of water that, you know, is going to go in there, then, you know, I think it does meet the, the intent of the regs. How big a storm do you need before you overflow what uh, the level spreader? It would a level spreader is not uh, designed to retain. It's uh, designed to mitigate the velocity coming out of it. So it's supposed to discharge during all storm events. It, it is discharged during all of them, but I'm wondering at what point, you mentioned earlier that, the, that, that with sufficient water flow that you would have decreased TSS capture. I'm just wondering what sort of storm level does it need to get to to, to reach that point? Or did I misinterpret? You didn't misinterpret. I think you might be looking at it a step further. Um, it's going to it's going to collect in the smaller storm events. Uh, you know your half inch storm events. You know the more typical summer showers and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's where it's going to capture most of the TSS, and that's where a lot of the pollution comes from. That first flush from those right. smaller events. Um, but it's. It's going to discharge at all of storm events, uh, mm -hmm. no matter what size, eventually. Um, I guess that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> oh, no, I recognize there's always discharge. That's okay. I th I'm thinking I'm getting down too far into the weeds. Um, but what I'm hearing from the commission is I think that that this is a good, is a good stormwater design that we can 
that we can stand behind from our side. And nobody's standing up to yell at me to tell me that I got it wrong. <laughs> so we'll accept that. Peter, Peter, this is Jared. Just one yeah. other real quick question. I, I think I know the answer to this. Has the um, water quality volume for the water quality structures, was the one inch water quality volume used to size them and not the half inch? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Any any place in the, with a DCR where there's an ORW or... or it's a DCR area up in here. You have to use the one inch. Have to use one inch, right? Yep. Rule of thumb is everywhere. Uh, right was one inch rule. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. All righty. Okay. Very good. So I think um, that's twenty-one, right? Correct. Yep. So comment number twenty-two. Um, just a comment on catch basin spacing. Um, with the revised plan, there's a spacing that's in excess of what the planning board would typically allow under the subdivision regulations, so they're going to need to request a waiver from that. Even though it's not the commission's jurisdiction, just want to make them aware of that. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you guys need to act on there and just put it out there, and we have no further comment on that. Um, comment number yeah. 23. Unless for some reason planning board doesn't do it, then there's a so small comes back to you when yeah, they get to modify okay. something. That's yep. fine. Uh, comment number 23 is resolved, and comment number 24 has to do with the preci uh, precipitation depths that were used in the drainage analysis. Um, they were slightly different from a previously issued analysis, but they're still in line with what is accepted values. So okay. just it's a note that something's a little bit different, but it's still okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Wow. The last, really section the, just has, the last section just has to do with permits that uh, are required for the project. And I don't know if you guys want to go over that, but that's for informational purposes, that's that's what's out there. All right. We know there's a lot. We know the water. How close are you on the water quality, sir, Clay? Well, um, we've spoken to the DEP, um, Gary. You know, Gary's doing the, Gary Domain's mm -hmm. doing it. And he said he, he's just a little behind, but he'd get to it as fast as he could. Okay. Um, they, were, they were happy after we cut from almost 10,000 to almost 5,000, you know, when we cut that well and fill. So I, I think that that should move along. I, I will say, I don't know if Carl or, or you guys know it, but the Army Corps did issue their permit. The 404 is issued. I have it. I can send it off to you. Okay. Um, so, Carl, we don't have you, your memo. I, we've been following along in the Hannigan response along instead of with your memo. So if you wouldn't mind just very briefly covering the other permits just so we have them here. Sure, absolutely. So, um Number one, amended order uh, order of conditions from you guys. Yep. Um, number two, approval from the Rutland Planning Board for the definitive subdivision. Um, and I'm guessing that's going to be a modification because I think they have an approved subdivision on file. Yes. Um, 401 water quality certification from DEP. Mm -hmm. uh, permit from the Army Corps of Engineers, which we just mentioned. Uh, a variance from DCR uh, for a proposed BBW alteration. Um, a permit from MEPA, uh, and I guess there was a, a certificate that has already been issued for that. Yes. Um, an NPDES general construction permit. Uh, those then, are fun. What's that, Clay? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, the last one is approval from DEP of a BRPWM09, which sort of goes hand in hand with the stormwater pollution prevention plan. It's anytime you have. Uh, a stormwater pollution prevention plan that discharges to an ORW, you're supposed to be on one of those permits. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Peter, if I may, this is Please Jennifer. Do, Jennifer. Yeah, um, I was wondering if it's possible if we get a copy of the uh, Hannigan's report sent to us. We'll be happy to. We have your email, don't we, Tamika? Yep, Jennifer, I can email that to you. That would be awesome. So, and um, if it's also okay with you, with the board and with um, Clee, can we get a copy of that, that 404 permit? Of course. Okay, that would be awesome. Do you, you have my you have my email, Clee, right? I do, yep, yep. I'll send it off. Okay. I have it um, I have it in, on file. I'll send it off to you in the morning. Okay, great. And um, uh, we held our variance hearing today, so. And closed it. We closed it, yeah, virtually. <laughs> It's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. Does any? I'm going to go through each commission member to see if you have any questions or comments about this report and the comments to it. So I'll just start. Skip anything? Nothing for you. Um, I'll go Melissa this time. No, nothing. I guess um, just confirming kind of next steps would be kind of the the updated responses from Hannigan for those kind of small, I guess not small issues, um, but the outstanding ones. And then um, I think they talked about a site walk. Is that right? I kind of was in and out at a second. That's correct. We're, okay. doing, we're doing a site walk. Wait, let me get the date so I get it right. The 16th. Yes. Okay. 16th, 10 a.m. at the Bear Hill Pump Station. Okay, thank you. And, and that way, and then we'll make decisions based upon that. Okay. Jared, anything? No, I'm all set. Thanks, Peter. All righty. Uh, well, thank you very much. For, oh, yep, Jennifer, anything? I'll let you I, go I just, have, I just have one question. Um, your site walk, is that open to other agencies? I'm not sure if I could, if you say yes. That is open to other agencies. I'm not sure if I can go because we already closed our variance hearing, but if I'm able to, is that open to us? Um, I guess that would also be up to Clee. Of course, uh, you can well, come anyway. I was going to say the commission doesn't mind. Uh, Clee, you say oh, yes? me, no problem at all. Great. Okay. So, yes, you are welcome. I'm just not sure because we closed the hearing, so I'm not sure. I have to check and see what, how that works with us. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can Are I there any call? other questions? Oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I apologize because my internet went out there for a minute. Is there is there a list of things that we need to provide uh, additional information to, or is there only questions left open? Are the stream crossing guideline questions? I think stream crossing was the biggest one. Uh, there was one that we sort of now I got to get myself back over here to find the right number where we decide where I decided not to discuss it because <laughs> I'm tired and cranky. Um, uh, which one? Was it the uh, culvert crossing or the cul yeah, culvert detail? The culvert detail we have, we saw that. Uh, oh yeah, no, well, I mean those those the questions that are coming from that will come when your real when your structural engineer comes. So I'm not going to hang everything waiting for that. Okay. Um, no, there was one of these questions earlier. Been extended, and I didn't take a note, which is really silly. Peter, um, was it comment number eleven having to do with how to finish the replication area? Yeah, that make, sure sounds right. Yeah. Cover? Yeah, we have so, ground cover, and when seeding takes place, all of that. Yes. Uh, I believe that those. I, yeah, that's that's exactly it. So it's the timing of the timing of the planting and. Right. Okay. But as far as information that we need to provide, the only thing that's left open, as far as I can see, is the stream crossing guideline question. I believe that's correct, right. Great. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I, I will open the floor to members of the public who have questions. If anyone has any, please virtually raise your hand. We'll try and answer them. Hearing nothing, uh, I think it's time for a motion to continue this hearing. I make a motion. <laughs> continue. Okay, the I have hearing. a motion from Skip and a motion from Will. <laughs> so one of you second the other. I'll second. <laughs> Skip's doing the second. Will got the uh, got the first. Uh, other discussion. Don't be silly. All in favor. Roll call. Kennan. Aye. Clark. Aye. Was an aye. Danza. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane, aye. All righty. Whew. Thank you. Yep. All righty. So we will see many of you on the 16th and continue this on the 19th. Okay. Thank, Thank you all you so much. much you guys. 
Thanks. For all your time. Let me see what the what we're missing on the agenda now, because I have lost track. Uh, Peter, the next topic is uh, the possible wetland violation at 73 Woodside F. Oh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to get rid of this. And hold on. First, stop sharing. Let me find my cursor. If, yeah, I'm going to go up here. Do you need me for that, Peter? It's really not me, but no, I, I don't think we need you, Clee. Thank you very much. I can tell you this much. There's no there's no issues there. I, I just drove by there the other day, so I don't know what that they're complaining about. But I'll I'll, I'll at that. Yeah, it's nothing to do with you personally. It's about a landowner. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And if you need me, you got my cell. Call me. I'll I'll get you jump back on. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Peter, it's Carl. I'm going to leave too. Thanks for your All time. Right, Carl. Thank you very much for your help and your work on this. Bye, Carl. I'll see you guys. Thank you. See you. Thank you. This is Jennifer. I'm going to um, turn off for the night. Okay. All Take right. Thank you very much. Bye, Jen. Bye. Bye. All righty. So, 73 Woodside Ave. And I can't even read my notes anymore on the people who are here. <laughs> Sean, so, I believe. Yeah, Sean people. Mead. Um, is there anyone else here? Because I know people have come and gone since we started the meeting. So are there other people here to talk about 73 Woodside? Hi, this is Michelle Cormier. There's Michelle, okay. Anybody else? All right. So, Sean was here first. He gets to speak first. Sean, go ahead, please. I'm just here to see what the complaint is about. Oh, okay. Being a homeowner. How can I How can I not be surprised by that? This isn't the first rule of running meeting to you know what people are going to say before, before they say it. So, let us jump over instead to our, I believe I will... I don't want to use the word complainant. I don't want to make this sound like a serious legal proceeding in the in a court. But um, anyway, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I am in a property that has abutting wetlands, and as far as I can tell, it's a designated wetland. We can't cut any trees, fill it in build anything and my complaint is that's exactly what he's doing he's filling in the wetland with leaves cutting trees throwing lawn debris it's changing you know the vegetation that was in there and the natural habitat of the animals that live in that wetland Okay. Sean, do you have a res an immediate response to that? I'll wait and let you guys discuss it, and then if I need to jump in with anything that I've done or any measurements I've taken, I can gladly provide those. There we go. Okay. Uh, if I remember right, I believe Melissa and Jared went out and had a look. Um, I called him Melissa first last time, so I'll call in Jared first this time. That's fair. Um, I did do a, a drive-by. I did not go onto the homeowner's property, obviously, but I did do a drive-by just to, to take a peek. And to be honest, I, I, it was it was hard to, to see where the the um, noted issue is, and and if any sort of materials were dumped or trees were taken down. Um, you know, it was it was hard to tell. Uh, basically, is what I'm getting at. I, I couldn't really tell which area specifically is the area in question and and what materials were put in that area. So um, I, I don't really have a lot to offer, unfortunately. Okay, fair enough. Melissa? Yeah, no, I will, I will second that. Um, you know, obviously we don't want to go on people's properties when they are not aware or without their authority. Um, so I think a next good step, you know, if the homeowner is willing to allow, you know, one or a few of us to kind of go and, and 
and look, um, I think that would probably be the, the easiest way and quickest way to get a resolution. Can I speak? Please do. Okay. Um, I have given full permission for anybody to come uh, to my driveway and see. I've sent in pictures, which I agree that it's hard to tell from the pictures, but I have no problem letting anybody come on to the property and look from from my side. You know, I, I just want to know if, if it's okay to fill it in. We'd be happy to fill ours in as well. Well, the fast answer is, of course, it's not okay to fill it in. Okay. Uh, and you can't you can't cut trees in, walk into the wetland and cut the trees, correct? Um, well, actually, you can. You can't grind. You can't do stump grinding. You have to leave certain amounts of it there. But you are allowed to cut trees in a wetland. Okay. With approval, though. Mm, true. There's also an approval thing. Right, you have to file an intent to. Yeah. Okay. So, was there ever an intent? Uh, anything submitted as an intent to fill that in or cut trees within that area? Can I chime in as Almora? Please do. So, the area that I've cleared and done some work to is a hundred and eighty feet from my pin line. That's and that's why I stopped cutting. That's the start of the wetlands, according to the GIS website. And I've taken several measurements. It, when the builder put up the silt fence, he left approximately a 12 foot gap between the silt fence and the start of the wetlands on that property. I don't know if you can pull it up on the GIS website. Uh, give me just a minute. Let me find my cursor again. Mm -hmm. Bring that up there. And let me also, just for the sake of discussion, that. Yeah. And Tamika, I just emailed you over a picture that can probably be a little bit more of a help to you guys. I don't know if you can pull it up. Um, let me check my email. Peter, I'm going to forward it to you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I can display it then. Okay, I'm sending it right now. That's where the culvert is. See that one? Okay. Actually, hold on. Now I'm slightly confused, but there's nothing unusual about that around these parts. About a little bit. All right. So, oh, this is Woodside. Okay. So, got it. Oh, that's right. This is that long driveway, right? Uh, yep. Correct. I'm sort of vamping while I'm waiting for Tamika's email to arrive. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe longer because it has a photo in it. All right, so Sean, if you could sort of lay, I mean, this is an old USGS map, well, map, a satellite image. So whereabouts have you cleared? You said 180 feet from what? From, there's a telephone pole 
that is the corner of the property. It's my neighbor's property. The people behind us and myself all meet at one point. This one right here? Uh, we can't see it on this side. At least I can. Oh, did I stop sharing? Yeah, it's not screen sharing. Of course. I apologize. Let me uh, go back to this so that I can take this, bring it here, which will let me do this. And that, that explains why you had no idea what I was talking about. Why, well, look, it's a picture of a map with stuff. So from that corner where the open space, my neighbor's property, my property, and then the driveway behind us all meet. From that corner to where it starts to slope back towards their uh, driveway, that's about 170, 180 feet right about there. And that's about where I stopped clearing. Hold on, so we were along this edge here. Ugh, why aren't you showing what I want to see? Feet, good. So it's 180 feet from here, along this axis? Yep. Yeah, that puts you right up against the wetlands. Right. Yeah, and that's where I stopped clearing. So... If you back up, there's a pine tree kind of stuff to tell. I right don't be able to see it here. Yeah. The picture I sent over, you can see it much clearer. And it has the house and everything in that view as well. Makes it a little easier to tell. Still waiting to receive. It still doesn't come, Peter? Not yet. You want me to... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I see junk. And look. Nothing from Tamika. I have other junk mail, which shouldn't be. I hope I'm not in junk. Okay, let me resend it one more time and see. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, now, now I'm having a different problem. Hold on. This might be it. Oh, no, that was definitely not that one. Nope. So, okay. no, I definitely don't have it yet. I'm going to send it again right now. Let's see. Pretty soon I'll have 14 pictures. I know, right? Okay, it says it's sent. Mm. The, tr the tree cutting? Yeah. Peter, can I make a quick comment in the meantime? Absolutely. Um, so I guess, Sean, just for your reference, um, even if you may have stopped at the wetland edge, any changes, including clearing 100 feet from the wetland edge, would have need to be approved by the commission um, if it wasn't part of like the original um, approval for the house. So because this is kind of an addition to, it's probably something that should have been permitted prior. When I spoke to some of the Blair guys that were coming and going around the property, they said that it was acceptable to clear and maintain that area long as you don't go within the wetland delineation. No, uh, it's they they did not speak the real truth to you. All right. Um, every, anything that happens within a hundred feet of the wetlands is concom jurisdiction. Okay. But everything that's been cleared is now dumped in the middle of that wetland. It's piled up well before that mark of the wetlands. It's within You're, 180 feet. I, I, I'm going to disagree. I, I think that what you've 
put in there is in the middle of that wetlands because it's right near that pipe that runs underneath the driveway. It's affecting the flow of water. It's not affecting the flow. It's, it's well with it's well out of the the water. I can attest to that. With the heavy rains and the amount of rains we had, there may be some swelling outside of that into that 180 feet, but it's mar it's within the marking of the 180 feet. Affecting the flow in that area is all the rocks and debris that is, is in the pipe that goes underneath the Woodside Road that has been there since I moved in that I'm assuming is there from the building. That pipe is full of rocks and allows very, very little water to come out the other side unless there's a significant amount of rain. I don't know if that's code and that's how they're supposed to be built to reduce the velocity yeah. coming out the other side that I cannot attest to, I guess. Well, I, I mean, our concern with anything that changes on your side changes the water flow on our side. It backs it up because you're changing the elevation of what that wetland. And that, that pipe is about three inches from the top of the water and flows on a regular basis nonstop. And nothing is impeded onto that side. All right. So here, here's what I'm going to do now. Sean, I'd like to set up an appointment with you to come out and actually look at the property on your property so we don't need to look from the, from the street or anything else. Absolutely. Uh, and, and take a look at everything that's there. I'd be more to than happy to decide our next steps. I'd be more than happy to. All right. Um, trying to think my schedule over the next couple of days is a little rough but Friday is going to turn out to be a pretty good day. Are you available Friday? I can be. Okay. Um, do I have your email? Um, probably not. I know Tamika does. Okay. Yeah, Tamika has it. That's good enough. Yep. So um, I will when I'm with my work calendar tomorrow, I'll have Tamika go as a, act as a go between. No, I'll, Tamika, send me yeah. Sean's email. Okay. And Sean and I will will directly exchange, figure out a time to get together. You got it. And good. Let, and then we'll plan to discuss this. What I, I see, what advice I have at the next Concom meeting. Peter, can I request that someone come up my driveway and meet with us to discuss this as well? Um, I can try and meet you the same day. Sure. All right. I will. Uh, I know I have your email because you've contacted us through the contact form. Yep. So yep. I, I will. I will make the same arrangement with you that I did with Sean, which is I'll get my. I'll figure out my work calendar. <laughs> So that we can arrange a time to get together, okay? That would be great. I appreciate Certainly. that. All righty. Um, Peter, I, this is this is Jared. Yeah. Just to throw it out there, um, would you want anybody else from the commission to join you out there? I'd be willing to join you if it works with my schedule too. Um, I'm happy for anyone in the commission to be there at the same time I am. Okay. So yeah. I, I will what. When I get the ske my schedules worked out, I will send the commission an email extend explaining when I'll be there. And the only thing I'm going to say is we can't have a quorum because we're not going to have a time to schedule it and get it posted. So there we go. Yeah. Peter, I just sent you an email with Sean's e email address, so just let me know if you didn't get it. I don't know why the picture didn't come through. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going on, because I haven't gotten anything, but I have to be on the network, otherwise <laughs> I wouldn't be getting anything. All right. I just have one quick question about, about the 100 feet from the wetland zone. Yes. So, if looking at this picture here, 
you can see my neighbor's house, obviously on lot 16 there. Yep. So if he does anything on his property, plants a tree, changes anything, he needs permission as well. Being well, a let's put it this way. This this is, this is well, just to suit, pretend for a minute that this is the actual end of the wetland. Yep. Oh, yes, that should be right. So if I click here, you can see that this is... That's 100 feet right there. So, yes, the 100 feet does stretch onto his property. Okay. You, you sort of sweep an arc of yep. 100 feet to tell you how far you go. So, what I will tell you is that when your house was built, they, uh, the, the, whichever company of Cleese it is that built <laughs> Bryce Lemon, uh, um, came before the commission and asked for permission to build it within the hundred feet. Okay. And with work, we could even find the original paperwork for everything they had to do and all the conditions that they agreed to. So, I mean, if I, I'm going to take a guess here that your house is about here, right? Yeah. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah. My driveway so, runs parallel to that. I don't know if that picture ever came through Tamika over to Peter. It gives a aerial overview uh, with the house, the driveway, oh, as okay. it sits. That's was hoping that would kind of come through and then yeah, it feels better for everybody to see. That, I'm, I'm sure I'll get it from Tamika in the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> right after you don't need it anymore. Exactly. I'm going to say Saturday is when it arrives. Uh, <laughs> So we'll take a look, um, and we'll figure out what the best next steps are. So with that 100 feet, so anything basically I do in my yard, put up a swing set, any sort of changes, I have to come to you guys, just how I'm understanding that? Yes, that will usually involve what's called an RDA, a request for determination of applicability to see so that the CONCOM can say whether or not it's what the work you're doing is requires permission from Conservation Commission. Okay. Now, the same is true on lot number 18, right? The opposite side yep. of this wetland, the exact same thing is true here. That 100 feet that extends over into 19, I expect. Yeah, that's Blair's show house. Ah. Number 19. Number yeah, 18, okay. they... They still have to do finish the lawn and everything on that property as well. Right. And then my guess is that under this driveway is a culvert to keep the flow between these two what look like separated wetlands. It's probably yeah, not... the wetland. I'm sure there's a culvert there. Yeah, there is a culvert there. Correct. Uh, it shows up on the GIS property map. Okay. The current one. All righty. So that's what we're going to do. I will see you Friday. Sounds good. Uh, please, Lord, let, I hope not Saturday because I don't want to go out in the snow because I'm, I'm a total snow wimp, which is weird for a Rutland resident, but true. But I, but we'll arrange to get together with, with I'll get, I will arrange to get together with each of you and I'll invite other commission members as soon as we know the date. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we'll just put that on the discussion list for next time, Tamika. Okay, you got it. Uh, so is there someone here to talk about tra trail data requests from CMRPC? I actually here I'll, I'll put this group of people back on the screen. Uh, Tamika, do you have the original email or message or whatever we got? Um, from CMRPC? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that I do. I just have to look for it here. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm the words that were going through my mind as well. Oh, yes.
Yes, I got your pictures. Okay. <laughs> Not a moment too soon. Uh. All right, I was going to... Oh, that's right. Where the heck is... I know you sent it before we were supposed to have our last meeting. Why can't I find search? They, they moved it. Ugh. Before the 21st meeting. So it used to be right here. Oh. No, I don't want to search for people. What? Suddenly, Outlook is not useful to me anymore. <laughs> I might anyway. Oh, oh, of course. They just changed it when I wasn't. I don't care. You know, this one you sent out to everybody on the commission. Uh, or I don't know if anybody else has it. I'm just scrolling through to try to find it now. I remember you sent it before our last meeting, which would have been the 21st. Tamika, I just found it. Oh. April April 12th. Thanks, Jared. I think this That's, is the right one. Megan Devon, right? right? Yes. Okay. That's the one. Oh, how do I make this bigger so people can read it? <laughs> All right. So, oh, a planning intern, that means she got to, she, she's the local person who got to contact everybody. <laughs> uh, we received a trails grant. So what they're looking for is any data we have on trails. Does anybody have any information about trails in this town? I sure don't. Neither do I. Uh, Skip probably knows all of them. Who does what? Oh, Skip. <laughs> I was going to send him to Dick Williams. Yeah, I would send him to Dick Williams, too. That's where to go. And actually, what's funny is he's our rep to CMRPC. Yeah. Yeah, there's also, there may be a question here that we want to address. I'm getting super tired, so I'm not sure I want to keep going too much longer about whether there's anybody who's interested in helping them do any of this. Um, Peter, this kind of connects with the next item on the agenda for the WPI working group, and I do know that Mason, who we had been speaking with, is in attendance right now, so I don't I don't know if maybe he wants to chime in on what they're looking for. Sure. All right. Hello. Um, yes, I'm uh, Mason Ocasio. I'm here with a few other members of my team as well: Matthew Carnes, Stephen Pardo, and uh, Mackenzie Warren. Um, we were and looking... Aren't you glad you all got to sit through that exciting meeting about <laughs> Burton All Estates? Oh, well, it was uh, it was a little interesting hearing some of those things. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know what we're doing for print. Princeton. Um, we're working with the Princeton Open Space Committee, and our goal is to provide a strategy guide for trail development for their future Trails Around Princeton project and any other future projects. So um, we were looking for some info regarding different trail connections, and um, uh, we've heard that Rutland doesn't have specific trail committees in town, and we were trying to find a, a certain committee that we could speak to that on behalf of trails in Redland. Well, <laughs> which judging by the last comments, <laughs> no, we, we really, not sure how much the, the town really hasn't taken. How can I say this in a politically acceptable way? The, the town periodically gets people who are very interested in it, in, in trails and recreation in general. And then some work gets done, and then, then that person stops being interested, moves on, whatever, and people don't follow, other people don't follow up. So we really don't have a 
a comprehensive set of trails or even a comprehensive set of information, at least none that I know of. Um, Skip is saying he can't think of one either, and he's been in town a whole lot longer than I have. Um, so where, where should we, how, how can we help these people, folks? Would you say that most of the trails we have are state-owned, Peter? Or private organization-owned? I think, since I the think trail? they're going to be virtually all privately owned. Peter, if I may, uh, Jennifer McGinnis had emailed me back when this was first on the agenda, um, and she did say that tra some of the trails were DCR owned, so she did want to be kept in the loop if anything came of this conversation. Uh, that's that's certainly fair. The I mean, what about what about what Jessica Greenways? Would they maybe be a source for? I don't know because they're they're limited to the rail trail. Okay. Uh, and that's really the totality of their involvement. DCR would certainly have anything on their property, and that would mean it, that would include, I think, the prison camps are owned by DCR. Yeah. Uh, Rutland State Park is owned and managed by DCR, so they would certainly have more information than I do about that. Uh, I'm trying to think, what other property in the town do they have that's that would have that would likely have trails. Rutland owns Putnam Park. Rutland owns. I don't know if there's anything even in Rutland, not even in Putnam Park. Uh, whoa, computer! Oh, that's why I keep doing that away. Actually, actually, hold on. Hold on. I might have a magic book of information. Oh, I gave away my magic book of information. Oh, I gave it to Melissa. That's right. The Open Space and Recreation Plan. You gave it to Jared. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, Peter, you, <laughs> gave, you gave it. Oh, you gave sorry. it to me, and it's and it's sitting right in front of me. Open it up, Jared. So if there's if there's a page I should go to, let me know. Uh, I, I'm actually going to have to find my copy of it electronically, which yeah, isn't supposed to be that hard. It was also suggested that perhaps talking to the town administrator may give you a better... Uh, may, 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 yeah, get you better names. But let me... Here is our open space and recreation plan. Should have. Oh, we didn't list all the appendices. Start at the end and work my way back. I remember. That's a lot of stuff back here. Oh, okay, here we go. Are all the trails by Central by CM, uh, 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 Central Tree Middle School gone now? I think so, because they... Pretty much, but still some on town property. Just little just things. For educational purposes. Right, right. Sixty one A. And that's gonna be sixty one. Ugh, that did not help. No, the really only trails that I can think of is just uh the rail trail in the mid state. 
which would be Rutland State Park for the most part. Now, I have no idea if there are trails in Pine Hill Reservoir around that. I have my doubts, but I don't know. Because when this was written, it was, they may have been there. There are some lands where things could have been done, but I don't think anything's been done to promote trail development in any of these spaces. Most of these definitely don't. I mean, the the schools are just the school, just the schools. I mean, there's there is a sort of nature walk behind Glenwood that my wife tells me about, Glenwood School. So I think it's a community center. Rutland Heights doesn't actually have any trails, I don't think, because because those are the ones that were that all cut down. Uh, Oak Ridge has, I don't think, no, no trails have been developed there. Rufus Putnam's got basically nothing. East County's just blank. Why is the highway garage here? I, I don't know. Why, why would we put the high the DPW garage on a list of special interests for conservation and recreation? Uh, sure, that is where Marsh Field is, but. And I, oh, all of the, again, I can't think of why this would be listed as special interest for conservation and recreation. Because now that, <laughs> Now that this area is getting a solar farm, it's never going to have a trail put on it. <laughs> Plus, it's our water. <laughs> if I may, for a moment, um, do you know about any anything for Overlook Farm? Um, Overlook, for, well, Overlook Farm is actually down a couple columns later because it is it's changed hands well or it did, did dick finish that purchase do you know or is no okay so it's still owned by overlook by heifer excuse me it's owned by heifer project international which closed their institute there but they still own the property uh, Heifer International is a is a company in I believe Arkansas. Uh, and I don't know if they developed any trails. They were more into farming. And so they they developed what they needed to to be reasonably self sufficient with the sheep and the cows and the and, whatever other livestock and bird stock they had. Uh, but I... Okay. Skip says there are no trails, so... Right. Uh, uh, so if I scroll down here to the private properties, that's where that... Right, so that's the space you were asking about right there. Okay. Right. Yes, I think with Princeton's case, they're, they're really just looking to extend out the um, their current system of trails just to reach out to any uh, other systems that may exist in neighboring towns. We've spoken to the other neighboring towns, Westminster, Holden, and such. Thanks. How much did they have? Uh, Westminster and Holden are not, not as um, structured, but we've spoken to um, Hubbardston and Sterling, and that we found some areas where we could extend to. Nice. As well as Lemonster. You mentioned uh, Rutland Hikes. Is that a hiking group? Rutland Heights is actually a property in the oh. center of our town that uh, used to be the, um, was that the, the TB? No, it was Veterans Hospital. It used to be a Veterans Hospital. It was actually a facility of buildings 
All the buildings are gone now, and it's a site that the town is actively trying to get people to build businesses in. I think I just misheard you then. Oh, that the, the Heights are trying to... So the Heights is... We're trying to develop as our business center. So we're trying to get the, get companies to invest in building businesses there. Okay. Did, would you know if... Um, I know you were just looking through. Um, would there be someone you could point us to um, that we would then... Our project is kind of ending soon. And so we would then point it for Princeton Open Space. Would there is there a certain person or group that might have some more info on some trails in Rutland? Um, I would say if you're trying to connect to the ones in Princeton, you know the ones that really the ones that would do that would kind of be the ones already in existence, probably on the Mid State Trail through DCR. Right, because they, they they have whatever exists, really. Yeah. And okay. I'm sorry to say that <laughs> with now that Jennifer's disappeared. <laughs> well, but we actually see our contact. I would use it to start with. Anyway, we did speak to. Um, I reached out to her separately because I noticed her on the emailing list. Um, oh, okay. And Tamika had mentioned her, and we have an interview with Jamie Carr, who is the regional director. Um, on Thursday to speak oh, about great. certain things. That, that's one of the biggest things we found in Princeton is the interaction with DCR and mm -hmm. um, also their sportsman clubs, which really restrict um, where they can go with their trail system. Hmm. Interesting. So um, I'm going to reach out to a guy in town who has, who has as much knowledge as anyone I can think of. I just want to see, I don't want to hand his email out without no, telling him first. So I will reach out to him. Uh, Tamika, we have their emails, right? Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Yes, we do. Okay, good. So uh, I'll talk. I, I will give your contact info to this guy to reach out to you directly so that I don't have to be in the middle. Okay. Uh, I, I wish I could give you happier, more fulfilling news right away, but I'm sorry. I, we just don't have any. That's quite all right. It, it's uh, it's in comparison to Princeton. Sometimes I, I feel like in our research we're expecting a little, not expecting more, but Princeton has seventy to eighty miles of trails, so it's just this massive amount trying to keep track of. Um, so it's the opposite sides of the spectrum, I guess. <laughs> right. We might have a lot, but we don't own any of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. How much okay. of that is off the mountain? Uh, Matt, do you have a number on that? Um, uh, not off the top of my head. A lot of okay. it is in um, Lemister State Forest, which is in the northern part of Princeton. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, which is a mountain and which is a meadow. I think they have 70% of the unrestricted trails in town combined. Wow. Nice. So. Okay. It's interesting on the CMRPC uh, aspect as well as we have compiled a map of all of the trails in town, privatized and publicized. And uh, that's we'll be supplying that to Princeton Open Space. And that'll probably go to CMRPC as well. Great. I think that was all of the, the questions that we may have had. All right. Well, again, I apologize for not having more good information for you, but hopefully you can get some something good out of this. And again, I'll I'll talk to Dick tomorrow and or I'll email I'll email him tonight and hopefully he'll be able to find to get in contact with you and give you whatever he's got soon. So you can do more work with your right. project. All right. Thank you. All thank right. You thank much. you very much. Where the heck did that window go? I don't even know. So 
Peter, if I may, I just have a couple of last minute things that were not on the agenda. That sure. I Sure. When I had talked about, I think it was earlier today, um, I sent everybody an email that I got from Kim Roth at DEP um, with some concerns about the order of conditions that we um, approved a, uh, about a month ago. I have to. Hold on. Yes, do you remember what project that was? Yeah, I'm just about to look it up. I believe. Was that what? Was it Wachusett, 134 Wachusett? Yeah, it's either DN along or. Um, the solar project, and I apologize, I forgot to look that up before we started, but let me just look real quick. Um, so I thought we had gone over. Uh, yeah, that was the one that, that was issued for Deanna Long, 134 Rochusett Street. Okay. And that one was presented by Julian. Right. And so they were saying we made comments, but they haven't seen. They saw our orders. Yep, I sent that to her. So I think she had said that she didn't see their comments addressed that they had made. Um, and I can go back and reference the minutes, but... I don't remember Julian saying that there was anything that they had to address or that they hadn't already. I, I hadn't thought so. I thought the only thing that they said is is the I thought they meant their comments mentioned. I have them here comment. if you want me to read them. Yeah, if you would, please. So it was three. So applicant must flag bank and quantify impacts um, in MA stream crossing standards. All culverts are to be culverts are to be, in, be embedded a minimum of two feet, and the recommendation that the crossing not be built until the permit building permits for the house are acquired. So I remember we did talk about the bank because we did bring that up, um, mm -hmm. and his comment back, I think, was that they were spanning it so that there was no impacts to bank. Um, and then, yes, the detail had the proper embedment. Right. Embedment, yep. is that a right word? Um, and then I think we conditioned the, the last one about the building permit. Didn't, on the second one, didn't Julian say he was claiming that the embedment embedment comment wasn't applicable because they're using an open bottom culvert. Oh, yes, I think you're right. I Is that think right? You're right. Yeah. And I, just could, I couldn't remember if that was actually true, that it's not applicable, but I remember him saying it wasn't applicable. Right. No, I think I, you're right because he is using an open bottom. Yeah, and I think that is that is true, that when you do use the open bottom, the two-foot embedment is not applicable. Yeah, because you're not, It's there's nothing to embed on the bottom. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> So what does she want us to do? Um, let me go back to the email. Um, well, she wanted us to call her to further discuss it. Uh, I don't know if it's a matter of somebody just calling her and basically just saying what you guys just said. Or I can, you know, if you maybe if Melissa wants to summarize it and I can email yeah. her, um, whatever is more convenient for you guys, I just want to make sure that I don't misspeak it because I don't understand it like you guys do. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 if the commission is okay, I, I'm more than happy to kind of just put up a, a draft email to send to Mika to send off. I think what she's probably getting at is thinking that um, there was an amended plan that wasn't submitted to the office because they've been wanting to see every reiteration of amendments lately um, or I guess not lately. You're supposed to, but they've been a little bit more enforcing of that. Um, so that's probably the Julian addressed it with us, but probably never sent a response back to them. Right. It's probably what it comes down to. So I can do a quick email tomorrow morning. That to me right. can send off. That would be great. Thanks, Melissa. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I have is quick. Um, we got a request today uh, from James Callick or his daughter on his behalf. Um, they're looking to do um, an extension on two orders of 
conditions. Um, Peter gave her the instructions on how to do that. She sent all the documentation over to me today. So my goal is to get her or him onto the agenda for our next meeting. Um, but I wanted to see if you guys in the meantime wanted to schedule a site walk in the next two weeks that I can post so that, you know, you guys will be all set before the meeting. Is that okay? I don't know that we're going to have the time to get another site walk in because this weekend looks bad. Yeah. And next weekend we've already got We've got Burton All Estates. Okay. Um, and even then, we need to find our way to get through into Town Hall to find the original plan so we can all see what the heck this, the, the original plans were all about. I, 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 saw, I saw that she sent the, um, the NOIs, but she didn't have the plans. I did ask her if she could find those plans because obviously they wouldn't be readily available. It would take some digging. Um, and I also asked her, one of them has an address. It's 146 Wachusett Street. The other one just is Lot 2 East County Road. So I did ask for clarification on where it actually is located. It's an um, abutting property, so it's going oh, to be right okay. next to it. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Um, so, well, yeah, I should I say that's my recollection. Of course, it's my memory, so I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if you'd like, I can follow up with her to get copies of the plans, and then I'll let her know that we'll push it to the first meeting in June. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, we can we can start the process mm -hmm. and just and just uh, uh, at the next meeting okay. and just wait on the site walk. Okay. Yeah, or even you know put. It you know, put it on the next agenda as a possible vote and, you know, if people can drive by in the meantime. Because if it's just, I guess, get further clarification on where they are in the process, too. Because if it's something that they just haven't started and... Yes, yeah, she did you know, they just need to the work has not been started. So, right, they haven't started at all. And, and I pointed out that it's been three years and the wetlands may have changed, which would cause things to happen for her. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so in fact, I'm not sure that driving by will give you information. Well, we can go on the property because it is an open order. Oh, true enough. That is true. So, if people, you know, have time in the meantime, we can try and right. get it done. <laughs> when does now, it expire, Tamika? Uh, uh, June 6th. Okay. Uh, Actually, wait. Well, let me ask an awful question because I, I might have lied to the lady because <laughs> I said the date that matters is the date of the signatures. Is that right or is it the date of filing with the registry? Um, it's the date of signatures, yeah, so as signatures. long as we approve it before the 6th, yeah, and as long as the request is in 30 days before the expiration. Yeah, so, yeah, so literally 31 days before. Yep, the request is in today. Yeah. We got the WPA form, what, mm -hmm. seven, I think. Yep. And uh, so I told her we weren't going to be too strictly on the details because she's made a reasonable effort to get it extended. Yeah. And it may be just a good reminder to say, you know, you might want to make sure your wetland flags are still out as we go past. Oh, yeah, that's a good thought. Yeah. I can let her know. Um, that'll make it a lot easier. Okay. Is this, uh, what's this project? Is it a single family house construction? I think it's two single family. It's two properties that today are bought. Okay. I, and I believe each one is intended to have a single family house on it. That's this is this is like right next door to that project we were just talking about, right? One, you said it's 146. What it's across. Street? It's across the street. Okay. And okay. in fact, it's on the corner of Watch Gotcha. Watch yeah. in East what? County. Route? It's one of our two murder houses. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I definitely want to do a site visit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, then I'll put it on the agenda for next time. I'll reach back out to Judith and ask if she can get us a copy of the plans and to make sure that the wetland flags are still out and then you guys can kind of you know go by and take a look you know as it works for you and then she was I mean she was very nice about it she actually said she's a former conservation um, agent so she's pretty 
versed in the process and she seemed, you know, very pleasant about it. Cool. All righty. Uh, I have one other thing. It was brought to me very recently by Mr. Cannon, who point and then and someone else, Skip, talked to me about it today, talked about 40 Prescott Street, that there are apparently a bunch of trees they've cut down in the wetlands, and they're not being very... Uh, they aren't obeying any of the rules that they're supposed to be obeying, I don't think. Or at least it sounds that way. I have not been out that way to look. I keep meaning to go down and, well, like so many other things I intend to do. Um, All you have to do is drive down the road, and it's very uh, apparent. It's all open now. The, all the trees are gone. Did they stump? Did you notice, Will? No, they didn't. Uh, they did the ones uh, between the wetlands and the road, but it's not even probably 60 feet to the wetlands from the road. Yeah. And, and, okay. the, and the place is surrounded by, well, almost surrounded by the wetlands on right. three, three sides. All right. So yeah. I'm just bringing this up to, to say we might have something going on we're going to have to address. Uh, they've, they've got thinks they might be already done, now. and so it's a little we're, all, we're we're a bit late to the party, but they still should have come to us correctly. So I'll we'll talk about reaching out to them. I mean, would it be worth it in the meantime to send them a letter asking to come to our next meeting? E yes. Do we know who the owners are? I don't. But... They, I believe they've been in to see the board before, but it was on a different matter. I think it might have been uh, when they were yeah. building them new, new homes over there across Wayne. from uh, Blueberry. Wayne and Mary Moody. That's who it lists as the owner on the GIS, on the sisters' maps. Huh. We could check. So, yeah, I, I will talk with Tamika. We'll talk about getting a letter out to them in the next couple of days okay. to uh, <clears throat> invite them to the next ConCom meeting. All right? Okay. Do we Sounds have any other? Me. Yeah. Do we have any other business before the, before the commission? Hearing none, I will. Oh, we have a motion from Skip. Second. <laughs> There's our second. All in favor? Oh, no. Another roll call vote. Clark. Aye. Cannon. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. Crane, aye. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Aye.